a worldwide research collaboration. These are the inspirations and the opportunities at UTP. We nurture the analytical skills and intellectual capabilities of all who walk the UTP path. Here we culture the ethics and the attitudes that will shine in the real world. Here we expose ourselves to what it truly means to be human, to be a valuable part of society, to be the empowered people the game changers who will light up the path towards a better world
A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our event will begin shortly. As a reminder, you are required to fill in the feedback form at the end of this session. Also, we will be having a break between morning and afternoon session. Should you have any questions during this event, kindly drop your questions in the chat box. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to everyone and a warm welcome to our honorable speakers, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Datuk Dr. Anwar Ali, Chancellor of University of Cyberjaya, Member of Board Governors Emeritus University Kuala Lumpur, Associate Professor Dr. Sharina Muhammad Nordin, Head, Center of Social Innovation, University Technology Petronas, Professor Dr. Balakrishnan Parasuraman, Professor of Management, Human Resources, Industrial Relations, Faculty of Entrepreneurship and Business, University Malaysia Kelantan, Associate Professor Technologies Dr. Jafrizal Jafar, Dean, Faculty of Science and Information Technology, University Technology Petronas, Associate Professor Technologies Dr. Khairul Azhar Mat Daud, Deputy Deans of Academic and Student Affairs, Faculty of Creative Technology and Heritage University, Malaysia Kelantan, our respective panelists, Associate Professor Dr. Pastu Puleti Wiswas Wararau, Associate Professor Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University Malaysia Sabah, Dr. Anna Bhattacharya, Senior Language and Communication Lecturer, Faculty of Management and Humanities Department, University Technology Petronas, Mr. Anil Nair, Consultant Talent Engagement and Culture, KPMG Malaysia, and all attendees. Welcome to COSI Webinar UTP UMK Joint Talk Gen Forum. I am Esther Becca and I will be the MC for our morning session. In line with the collaborative talk can forum between University Malaysia Kelantan and University Technology Petronas, we have prepared the official songs for both universities. Let us proceed with the official song. Thank you. 
Thank you. Before we proceed further, let us first begin with the recitation of prayer that will be led by Mr. Ahmad Hazim. Please welcome. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إنك خلق العظيم إنك سميع أليم إنك غفور رحيم إنك رب الأرش العظيم إنك بر الزواج الكريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you to Mr. Ahmad Hazim. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, this event is a collaboration between UMK and UTP with the support of Center of Social Innovation UTP, Institute of Self-Sustainable Building UTP, KPMG Malaysia and KPMG UTP Ambassador. The objectives of this event are to engage community on awareness on nation building, competencies and income in this era of COVID-19 pandemic, as well as to create platform of engagement with employers on preparedness, incompetencies and skills to meet the job market requirement. And lastly, to provide awareness to students and educators related to the skills needed to meet the challenges in the fourth industrial revolution era. Hence, this event is organized with the theme of nation capacity building, skills, competencies, and income generation. Moving on, I would like to welcome Associate Professor Dr. Sharina Muhammad Nordin to deliver her welcoming speech. Dr. Sharina, the floor is yours. Thank you, <coughs> Miss Esther. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, yang berbahagia, uh, Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Datuk Anwar Ali, Chancellor University of Cyber Jaya, uh, Professor Dr. Balakrishnan Parasuraman, uh, Professor of Management, Human Resource, Industrial Relations, University Malaysia Kelantan UMK, Associate Professor TS Dr. Jeffrey Zal Jaafar, uh, Dean, Faculty of Science, Information and Technology, University Technology Patronas UTP, respected guest speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, uh, salam sejahtera, and a very good Saturday morning to everyone. I would like to welcome everyone uh, here today though it is a weekend, it's a Saturday, but many are present uh, today to participate in our webinar, which is uh, hosted, uh, as mentioned by uh, Ms. Esther just now, by University Technology Patronas. But our webinar today is actually a collaborative effort between UTP and also University of Malaysia Kelantan UMK. I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone involved um, in making uh, this event a success, uh, inshallah. So the theme of our webinar today, as mentioned just now, um, is very important, uh, which is nation building, skills, competencies, and income generation. Uh, the theme is highly relevant to the education sector, uh, but we are very privileged today, as not only that we have with us uh, eminent speakers, uh, from the academia, 
uh, but we also uh, have the honor um, to host speakers and forum panels from the industry. Thank you very much um, to all the speakers for accepting our invitation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the crisis uh, that we face today necessitates a deep dive into deliberations, discussions uh, on how we can continue uh, striving to build future generation, to build the leaders of tomorrow for nation building. The pandemic today, as you can see, has caused uh, economic slowdown uh, and stagnation which has threatened job opportunities for our future graduates. Some even fear a very bleak future for our graduates. We also know that the vulnerable communities are most impacted, especially in terms of loss of income and uh, unemployability uh, due to the crisis. Uh, small enterprises are hit the hardest and the workers with daily wages uh, received uh, most severe impact and become very vulnerable during this uh, crisis. And uh, it will take a very long time uh, for them to recover uh, during post-crisis. Um, well, just like Yang and Ying, uh, along with this crisis, we also uh, see opportunities that, have, uh, that arise eh, at the, as the consequences uh, of this crisis. We see that in some instances, COVID-19 crisis boosts innovation and technology and digitalization even more uh, and even at a faster rate. Hence, uh, it is important to see how we can, um, it's important eh, to see how we as universities, uh, together with the, with the, with the industries, uh, to respond uh, to what is happening around the crisis today by tapping on our strength, which one of them is exploring advancements and innovations uh, for, for example, um, taking advantage of Industrial Revolution 4.0. Uh, we should continue to explore technology solutions and innovations, for example, leveraging leading edge technology in uh, AR, AV, big data, uh, artificial, artificial intelligence uh, to advance some urgent societal issues, for example, like the immersive education technology. As uh, we are now living in a radical uh, transformation, as you can see, yeah, we are trying to, ad to adapt uh, to the situation today. Um, with the challenges uh, of living in the new norm of COVID-19 crisis, uh, we currently face great challenges. Uh, and for that, we need innovative solutioning. We hence look forward to uh, our intellectual discourse sessions today that we have lined up for you. Um, yeah, as speakers, uh, our renowned eminent uh, speakers uh, with the three main objectives. Yeah? The first one is, uh, as mentioned by the MC, uh, to engage community on awareness about nation building, competencies and income generation, to create platforms of engagement and employers on preparedness in competencies and skills, to provide awareness to students and educators related to the skills needed for IR 4.0. So with the sessions lined up for you today, I am certain that all will gain beneficial knowledge and inspiring sessions, inshallah. So have a wonderful webinar, everyone. Thank you very much. Back to you, Ms. MC. Thank you, Dr. Shaina, for the wonderful speech. Next, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Balakrishnan for his welcoming speech. Professor, the floor is yours now. Uh, thank you to MC. Uh, very good morning and salam sejahtera. Hope all of you are doing well today. It was a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you. Thank you for making the time to watch our webinar today. It is especially a great moment for us to have a great educationist. Uh, first of all, yang bahagia, Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Dato Dr. Anwar Ali, who is the Chancellor of the University of Cyberjaya, our keynote speaker, and all respected panel members. My fellow uh, colleague from UTP, uh, Yang Bahagia, Associate Professor T.S. Dr. Jafril Jafar, Dean of Science and Technology, 
Associate Professor Dr. Sharina Mohamad Nordin, Head Center for Social Innovation, and also my uh, fellow colleagues huh, from the UTP, Dr. Anna and Dr. Savita, and also our respected uh, speakers. Huh? We have an invited speaker from industry, Mr. Sunil Anil, and also our forum panelists, my fellow uh, colleagues huh, from UMK, and also uh, all the participants and uh, beloved students uh, around the world. We already invited, uh, sent the invitation to students from, uh, from Africa, from India, and also from other part of the universities. Okay, first of all, I would like to welcome all of you to the uh, prestigious seminar about UTP UMK joint talk event. The theme of today is Vina is a nation capacity building skills, competency, and income generation. Thank you for partic uh, participating in this webinar, still hosted by University Technology Petronas. This is a collaboration effort between UTP and University Malaysia Kelantan. And this webinar is an outcome of fruitful collaboration, collaborative effort graduate, uh, on graduate employability, which is uh, one of the important, most important issues going on and very hot topic in Malaysia, especially during the pandemic. And uh, as an expert in HRM and uh, minimum wage at the national level, I would like strongly believe that collaboration and partnering both public and private universities and industries may provide the better solution to existing issue in the graduate employability. And I believe uh, our Yambage Tansri uh, Anwar here, also one of the head uh, chairman for the technical committee for Wage Council, which I also one of the committee there. We are very much uh, concerned about graduate employability recently. We discussed at the national level with the ministry and with the industry. Uh, we, also have, uh, we, want, we want to see the graduate really uh, employ after the graduate and we also see the better salary which is I think recently we saw this uh, latest news where the graduate earning below the minimum wage which is not appropriate at this moment for this uh, uh, webinar we're going to address some of the issues uh, how to bring the graduate to the next level and I believe the university industry collaboration has been identified an essential item on Malaysia agenda for transforming itself the knowledge and innovation based economy so on the occasion as well i also like to uh, forward our thousand thanks to yamhagia professor dato dr azizi umk vice chancellor uh, utp vc umk deputy vice chancellors research innovation from arham umk research management innovation center uh, director for dr ziad and all parties who are always giving their strong support to us along research I, I would like to also thanks to our former uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor Dato Ibrahim Cheikh Omar, uh, who is a previous uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, and uh, he has actually initiating this uh, matching grant under his uh, leadership. And then from that, I think we are able to receive grant from both uh, University of Malaysia uh, Kelantan and UTP, uh, which lead by Dr. Enna and uh, currently lead by Assistant Professor Dr. T S uh, Kairol. Eh? All right. So, as at, 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 you know that uh, UMK actually, uh, the, 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 the niche is actually entrepreneurship. And I believe that with the collaboration with the UTP as a science and technology university, with entrepreneurship university, and then we can see some changes will happen during this time. And I really hope that this uh, uh, webinar, that everyone is very important, panelists, everyone is very important person to address the issue, not only to, to the student, also to the to the policy maker at the university level to the vc to the to the down to the deans and so on so that we have to look at the what is the syllabus to be uh, revamped and also what the industry really needed what the skill and so on so this research almost completed and we are coming to the to the to the to, the, to make the report and of course we will uh, publish and we make known to all the participants in this room and it's a very hard work i believe it's a lot of uh, adults we've gone through during this research and especially during the pandemic we are having a lot of trouble but with a strong team between umk and utp uh, with the various background people come from the science like like dr rao from medicine school and uh, dr Raj from the science health science and uh, some of us from the different different field uh, we are get together and i believe all the graduate uh, in this room also will benefit through our discussion for this morning and this this discussion not just will be hand here of course, it will continue in the future with different forum. And we're really thanks to uh, what you call uh, to Tansri. Uh, although Tansri have a very big, uh, I mean, very uh, schedule is very tight, 
and he able to you know uh, make a time to come and share with us. And I know that Tan Sri have a very vast experience in academic because he was a former uh, UKM uh, VC and also uh, OUM pre uh, president for the last uh, many years back and currently also in uh, Chancellor. Uh, so with this, all the experience, I think uh, what Tan Sri is going to share is really to, to giving the what's going to happen in the future, what is going to, going to happen in the future and we need ready for now. So this research not just put in the, in the desk. Of course, we're going to publish in journals and make a report, maybe in a book. And of course, the most important thing that the research goes to the policy maker. And I think I'll, I'm really, really happy that uh, Tan Sri uh, maybe uh, can bring this matter to the higher level, especially to the Ministry of Education, Higher Education and Ministry of Education, uh, because we believe the soft skill not only started from the university, it's a very wrong concept. Actually, we're going to change the student to speak English, very, very wrong concept. It should start from the primary school or kindergarten, they, they should start and they should start from the family. It's not when come to the university, then we go to teach a skill. It's actually wrong concept, I believe. But but what we're trying to do in the university, we are trying our best. Actually, university done a lot of good job. And industry must understand also we are doing our best. And I'm able to come out some of the graduate, and most of the graduate, I think they're able to have all the skill, the talented uh, people. So with that, I think I believe this webinar is a very important webinar for the timing, especially in COVID-19. And we hope that I wish all the participants will have a great time for a whole well, well day with the great speakers. And please ask questions. And uh, I believe uh, many speakers will be willing to share and help of you. So with that, I think I'm, I'm thank you to everyone, especially uh, Yang Bahagia uh, Tan Sri, uh, also to the uh, prof, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Javier, the Dean of Science and Technology, and also my colleagues from uh, UTP, Dr. Anna Dr. Savita, and also from UMK, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Carol, Professor Prof. Dr. T.S. Dr. Nick, Assistant Professor Dr. Rao, and also Dr. Raj. Thank you very much. Have a fruitful discussion. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Balakrishnan. Now let us proceed with the next speech by Associate Professor Technologies, Dr. Jafrizal Jafar. Dr. Jafrizal, the floor is yours now. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, uh, Esther, for, for the introductions. Okay, uh, yang berbahagia, Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Datuk Dr. Anwar Ali, Chancellor University of Cyberjaya. Professor Dr. Balakrishnan Parasuraman, Professor of Management, HR, Industry Relation, University Malaysia, Kelantan. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Sharina, as a main person in this uh, event, uh, to all speakers, distinguished guests, participants, colleagues from UTP, also colleagues from uh, UMK. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Very good morning. Uh, I'm on behalf of UTP. Feel uh, very proud with with the, these two collaboration between UTP and UMK because we see that there is a, a integration between the technology and the engineering part, which is the technical part, which is, uh, uh, you can see UTP is a, a technology-oriented university, and UMK, the entrepreneurship, we can see the synergy there. And I'm very proud that uh, both universities are heading towards uh, the same goal for the betterment of the humanity, society, our country, uh, and, 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 and so forth. So this is have been a good sign uh, of it. Everybody know UTP, as I mentioned, the technical university, even though we are technical, we also feel very uh, proud to say our humanities and management arm also moving uh, uh, as uh, synergy and synchronized with our technologies. So center uh, lead by Dr. Sharina is one of the example, and also we collaborate with, with uh, others. This is in relation of uh, IR 4.0, because IR 4.0 most of it, as we mentioned, focusing on big data, intelligence system, machine learning, and, and so forth. But we cannot forget how it will impact our society, human being, student, citizens, and 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 the and the country. So I believe today webinar and discussion uh, will gain a good finding for the betterment uh, of our country especially during this uh, crisis, pandemic, and 
will uh, assist uh, the policy maker, our stakeholder to move forward what we can do next. So this is a very uh, important webinar uh, event for me uh, on behalf of UTP and also I think uh, at UMK. Uh, once again, I think uh, the input and then the, the sharing session with all the from the speaker, especially our keynote speaker, I think uh, his view and experience, as been mentioned by Prof Balakrishnan just now, uh, will give us some. Uh, we will be able to to see uh, ideas what will go ahead uh, in the future and sharing from the industry also see how academic and industry can move together in, in that sense uh, as well. All right. So um, I'm really hope uh, all the participants will get benefit of this. Um, and I believe even though today is Saturday, all the participants still uh, spend their time because they feel that this is a very important uh, journey, very important event. Uh, not just about our country, I think for the new knowledge, uh, new information that we generate uh, from from here. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, I I'm not going to prolong my 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 uh, my talk uh, my speech uh, today because I believe all the participants are uh, very excited on this event with the sharing session and and so forth. Um, for the last and not least. Uh, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, all the organizing committee, uh, but uh, both uh, from both sides, UMK, UM, uh, UTP, especially from uh, UTP side, Cozy, uh, who have I think spent time and commitment to make this event a very uh, going to be a very successful uh, event, and I believe this is not just a one-off event. There will be a continuous event similar to do some sharing, not just uh, in UTP and with UMK, I think we need to go move forward at the national and international uh, level uh, as well. So uh, with that, thank you all for this uh, event, for inviting me to give us a few, a few words, and I hope you will get a wonderful webinar and get benefit of it. So with that, thank you. I pass back to uh, Ms. Esther. Thank you, Dr. Jafriza. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have been waiting for is finally here. Now let us begin with the first keynote talk by Yang Bahagia, Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Dr. Dr. Anwar Ali. Tan Sri, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Esther Rebecca. Uh, let me... Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Uh, let me firstly uh, thank the organizers, uh, particularly from uh, UTP and U, uh, UMK for inviting me to uh, to give a talk early this morning. I'm most delighted uh, to be here and I'm uh, very honored as well. Let me uh, firstly thank uh, Dr. Sharina for being the host, the main host, uh, Professor Bala, and of course, uh, Dr. Jafrizal, the Dean of the Faculty of Science and IT, for giving me the introduction early on. Uh, uh, next one, please. Next uh, slide. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by uh, uh, sharing with you what I feel as the uh, uh, general background uh, of the development of our country. And I have quoted two uh, quotations here. One is from the Malaysia Second uh, Malaysia Plan, which is uh, introduced in 1971. And the most recent one is the Malaysia Education Blueprint for Higher Education uh, from 2015 to 2025. Now, when you look at these two quotations, uh, we feel a sense of uh, urgency uh, to ensure that there's a match between what is produced by universities, the graduates from universities, and at the workplace. And things haven't changed. If you look at the second Malaysia plan in 1971, uh, there was a 
introduced in 1971. So the, the, the policy makers were worried, even at that time, 50 years ago, that the expansion of higher education can quite clearly pose problem of educated unemployment of serious proportion. And now when we, 50, 50 years down the line, when you look at the uh, Malaysia education blueprint, they, they are very concerned about the mismatch between the supply and the demand of graduates, as you can see from this quotation. Uh, next, please. Having said that, I now refer to the aspiration of this uh, webinar forum, which is to ensure that Malaysia now we are in a middle income, uh, what we call middle income developing country. And we haven't gone uh, to be a high income economy like some of the developed countries and even uh, our nearest neighbor, Singapore. So in that sense, if you look back at Vision 2020, uh, which was uh, initiated uh, about 30 years ago, we wanted to be a high income economy so that uh, we have a very high level of capacity building, that means our human resources and so on. And from this, we develop various sectors of the economy so that we will generate income for the uh, citizen, for the population of the country. But as it is, Vision 2020 target of being a high income economy is constrained by the fact that we, we cannot move on. Uh, we are just uh, being called as a middle or rather middle income country rather than high income economy. So because of that, one has to understand that there is always a gap between realizing the most important asset that we have, which is our population, our young population, our youth, and we all. So that we become productive and uh, to, uh, to contribute to the economic activities of the country. So the concern may be felt in terms of the various uh, challenges that is faced by the education sector, uh, not only the school sector, uh, the universities, but also lately we have introduced lifelong learning, which I'll mention later. Now, because of this situation, because of the challenge that we face, we will look at the various sectors, agriculture, manufacturing, services, construction, and so on. We, we are still dominated by, uh, what shall I say, low or middle range value added activities. Uh, because of the fact that our R&D is still minimal comparatively. Our innovative uh, activities are still uh, not as uh, developed as in many advanced countries. And because of this, we find that we look at the structure of the employment of our country. A lot of our working population are considered as low skill or semi skill But nevertheless, we can see an increasing number of those who are regarded as highly skilled. For the moment, it's only about between 25 to 30 percent. But hopefully, with new policies, with new, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, priorities in terms of our uh, uh, human potential, we hope to enhance the number of uh, highly skilled workforce in our country. And because of this low uh, value added activities and the concentration of people of our working population in low skill and semi skilled workforce, we find that the trickling down effect of income generation in the country is very slow. And it is because of this that in our country, we often talk about income disparities, 
income inequalities. Uh, this can be manifested in terms of income of, say, the population that is regarded as B40 now. And also there are regional disparities, uh, income disparities between people who are involved in uh, the agriculture sector, manufacturing and the modern services sector. So because of this, we must be able to, what do you call, to jumpstart so that our economy will be moving faster. And the only source that I can think, apart from uh, capital investment and so on, is our human capital development. Uh, next, please. Now, if we look at the figures, uh, oh, the, the data doesn't appear there. The, uh, the table don't seem to have uh, the figures. But anyway, let me just say this, that uh, because of the current situation, and as was mentioned earlier by our distinguished speakers, uh, at, the, at the beginning, we are very challenged uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which started seriously about uh, slightly more than a year ago in March 2020. And because of that, the latest figures show that the unemployment level in our country at the moment, uh, which is quarter uh, first quarter 2021 has been increasing to 4.8% of the po of the working population. Generally, over the years, all over the years, is about 3%, 3.2% and so on. But because of the situation of the pandemic, and I believe now that the uh, PKP has been uh, lengthened for another uh, two weeks, the chances are that this may be affected uh, in our in terms of our uh, uh, employment uh, figures for the next month or two. Now, what is also important in terms of the impact of COVID is the underemployment of our working population. It becomes more conspicuous, and we find that uh, actually. According to DOSM, uh, the Department of Statistics, 2.9% of our workforce now, uh, which is the last three months, shows that the uh, number of people are working less than 30 hours per week. But I believe the, the numbers may be higher because uh, a lot of our working population are involved in small businesses small enterprises and uh, or micro enterprises and these numbers may be inflated if we, we look uh, thoroughly and at the moment those people who don't uh, who work less than uh, 30 hours per week is uh, among amount to about 440,000 and within this month I suspect this will increase further now in terms of graduate unemployment this is, of course, serious matter, not only to our faculty members, but I believe to all our uh, undergraduate now who are coming out into the system, maybe next year and so on. What is happening is every year, Malaysia produces generally uh, about 100,000, uh, sorry, 300,000 graduates per year, plus those who come back from overseas and so on. So the, uh, the number of unemployed graduates may increase within this month, the following month, and until the end of the year. And as was mentioned by Professor Bala Krishnan just now, what we find is because of this, there's a lowering of graduate uh, intake, the fresh graduate, I mean. So as we can see from the figures, uh, from uh, 2019, before COVID, the general uh, uh, wage level of graduates, fresh graduates, will be between 2,000 ringgit to 2,005. 
2,500 in 2019. But last year, it was found that, uh, according to Dosum, is between 1,000 to 1,005. And this, as uh, Professor Bala mentioned just now, is actually lower than the current minimum wage for common workers, for those who are considered as unskilled or semi-skilled at 1,002 for major towns and 1,100 for those outside the major town of this country. So you can see the situation is very, very challenging, uh, not only for universities, but also I believe for industries as well. To keep on uh, taking in people, taking in new people, including our fresh graduates. Next, please. Now, I believe that as part of our discussion today, uh, the most important uh, development for undergraduate of our universities are actually uh, I listed there, there. We can discuss this uh, quite a while, but nevertheless, I just highlight some of the things that are important uh, for us to realize for the undergraduate to know. Let, let's say on the left hand side, what we call thinking skills, management skills, entrepreneurial skills, computing skills. These are actually learned uh, most of the time when you are undergraduate because that will be to me a higher level of skills which must be uh, born, which must be taken into account by faculty members and transmitted, shared with the student. Now, on the second side, interpersonal and leadership skill is equally important, but these are things which can be taught even at schools where you find uh, that activities, uh, extra curriculum activities, co-curriculum activities at schools, you, you also teach uh, interpersonal and leadership skills. And the other one is of course communication skill. Uh, we communicate, we articulate with others, we discuss with others, and language is of course important. And But uh, because of the current situation, and sometimes we emphasize English. Uh, this has become a very challenging uh, task for the schools to ensure that the student, uh, our student, uh, get the right uh, level of English skills, English language skills, so that when they go to university, is uh, they are already equipped with necessary skill. But as we all know, this may not achieve the right. Uh, uh, level and so on. Now, for all these, all these skills, to me, I believe that, and talking through experience, it's a learning process that will go through at every stage of our life, whether from the family to start with, and now that we find, <coughs> to me, uh, there are three pillars of education. One is the school system, the other one is of course our universities, and the third and last one is lifelong learning. Because most people in our country, because uh, about a, a big proportion of our young population, almost 60% uh, or 62, 63% don't go to universities, but they have a second chance, meaning lifelong learning, uh, they can go through lifelong learning, but also uh, undergraduates who can go lifelong learning, they take in uh, other courses and so on. This part of it. But the problem here is, for instance, when I say three pillars, whose responsibility is to ensure that our graduate will have all these skills when they come out of the uh, system. Because if we read some of the articles in newspapers, uh, even in journal, uh, there, there's a tendency to blame the universities when 
it comes to undergraduate because they will say you know you don't teach all these interpersonal skills uh, your your students are not good your graduates are not good but i believe it's a continuous process from school some of the skills are learned from school even thinking skills you do you don't have uh, you must encourage thinking even at school level you know secondary primary and so on not rote learning as we know it and i'm surprised i think you all share with me every time when we have spm results the last two days is always better than the last year so i don't see the where's the end you know where's the end but despite the fact that now because of the hybrid uh, form of learning and teaching the result spm for this year is better than the previous year i'm of course this is subject to another uh, forum i guess where we can discuss about it but for malaysia we look at the bottom there we have to have other what do you call attributes of the student not only from the school but from the university we have what we call rukun negara the five principle we all know it so how do you embed this in the student how do you uh, know that they are well equipped with rukun negara so this will also imply national identity uh, our uh, good values ethics and so on so for the school system for the new city system apart from giving the knowledge that you are supposed to give the, the 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 skills you know the competencies in the knowledge you have to do all these thing and is is very challenging not only for the teachers at the school level but for faculty members at all universities uh, next please now the most important as was mentioned by our earlier speakers dr sharina dr jafrizal jafrizal uh, professor bala how do we link this from the what we have uh, in the universities the academic program that we give to our student in all the faculties not necessarily in the sciences or it or engineering but also encompass all and we we have the current policy which is uh, not much discussed currently because of the fact of you know we are the government is dealing with covid and so on but there is such a thing as shared prosperity agenda of the government from uh, last year uh, aim to be next 10 years and these three things are actually emphasized are given priority in terms of human capital formation what are the role of the schools what are the role of the universities uh, that's the first one we must produce good graduates excellent graduates in terms of the skills competencies and so on and then of course tvet vocational uh, education has been mentioned all the time we need to increase science student uh, who do science and technology and so on and of course continuous upskilling and reskilling they have become uh, a major part of the government uh, initiative of late because of the uh, current situation where people are laid out and uh, what is needed is how to upskill them and certain portion of our population uh, particularly the semi uh, skill and the low skill have to be uh, their skill have to be enhanced uh, not only by industry but by uh, uh, training uh, providers in our country but of course all this thing currently must be related to as was mentioned earlier as well which is uh, industrial revolution 4.0 now the ministry of education uh, higher education 
as this action plan. And you can see the uh, slide there. It gives a lot of focus on the new areas that universities, school must play. And we mentioned about artificial intelligence, data analytics, internet of things, and so on. But again, how do you relate to the system? Because to have all these new things, which are beyond our capacity in a way, because they are they always, you know, the the uh, the development of this uh, IR 4.0 is exponential. It's so fast that how do we cope uh, to catch up with all these things? And in the focus of the action plan of the Ministry of Education, you can see the uh, higher education governance. This, I think, relate to how public universities particularly uh, can enhance their governance system to be more flexible, to be uh, more autonomous in terms of making decisions, in terms of making decisions about academic matters, uh, program, and so on. And of course, to enhance their 4.0 ecosystem. How do we develop the system uh, the learning platform and so on to have all this in our university. And thirdly, is how to produce highly skilled, and this is important, knowledgeable talent for our industry. Because the industry seems to me faster, a little bit faster than the universities. So how do, how do we match this, uh, the needs of industry? As I said at the beginning just now, to close the gap between the supply of uh, graduates and the needs industry. It's always a tussle. The industry people will say the universities don't produce the right people and so on. And last but not least, research and development and innovation must be given priority. And this is where uh, we have a very weak link between universities and industry. And you must remember that, uh, we must remember that our R&D is still very low in terms of our national uh, product, uh, in terms of national income and so on. Unlike countries like uh, Singapore, Korea around this area, Japan, and of course China now, they spend about three to 4% of their Cadian uh, national product every year for research and development, which can be commercialized. This is where we are still weak. Uh, this is a weak link that we must have so that universities produce the right thing, produce the right product, the right innovation for industry. Next, please. Now, with all this, I believe that we have the potential. The, uh, there are people in the, our university who are well geared to this. The only thing is some faculties are more advanced than others, but nevertheless, we put our minds together. I think we can do uh, something better. So for us, for faculty members, given this new working environment, how do we adjust to the skills that are needed in industry particularly. How do we define which industries will be moving faster? We are given that uh, uh, what you call the signal that the new industries will be related to IR 4.0. But as a small country, as a country that is not as developed in terms of R&D innovation, we must be able to focus, to give priority to certain new skills. We can't do all because we are still, you know, uh, we must choose the priority. We are still uh, moving upward. So it's important that these new skills must fit in into the needs of the industry that have been developed under the IR 4.0. Now, the next one is of course automation. 
smart what we call smart product and new business model and i believe utp for instance umk will 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 go into this uh, particularly how to identify what are the new business model in this context so this student will be prepared if we have all this faculty members are prepared to do this so to to identify all these models that are uh, always uh, you know available in terms of information in terms of the experience of industry and so on the third item is as we know is job shifting uh, where a uh, young graduates or even uh, slightly older graduates they are not uh, like my generation where we go into a job we take the first job we end up in that job until we retire but the graduates of today they are more choosing they want to see what are the potential uh, in terms of not only income how you to utilize their capability their knowledge and this is where uh, i think student must be taught how to move in the right direction and some job of course will disappear some jobs will disappear uh, and this create job insecurity among the fresh graduate uh, fresh school leavers because uh, we are not sure how a technology how it will take over all this and it create a sense of insecurity for many undergraduates because of the fact that we are not sure where their occupational profile will move on and last but not least i see this is an important item in one of your uh, uh, forum uh, maybe this afternoon uh, what we call freelance working where people we stay at home uh, work from home and they do this and even uh, as an example my daughter is doing this she's a graduate but she stays at home i say why you want to stay at home why do you leave your job after the two years is she said she's happier that way because uh, i think i told professor bala she she uh edit a lot of phd student uh, thesis and she said that some of the thesis especially foreign student their english is, is not so good so she she can charge more to the foreign student who who do their phd here that's one of the item that will be taken into consideration of course a fresh graduate has to be taught to be mighty that means meaning they can look uh, not only at one uh, tunnel but they are capable of looking at various channels so that uh, when they go out of the system of the new system they are able to adapt to the new changes that i mentioned and of course creativity i believe all the students are taught to be creative and these have become more important creativity not only uh, telling the student what to do but equally important what are the programs that are to be taught uh, possibly uh, to engage student to be more creative and i think every faculty member every faculty in the university have to think through uh, what are the areas that we can teach the student to become more collaborative and last but not least i think the student through our teaching uh, methodologies uh, learning uh, system have to be articulate i think that's very important articulation of ideas articulation of their experience because sometimes a student may be average you know they only score maybe uh, 2.9 2.8 cgpa but if they can be articulate impress the industry impress the future employers that's the most important part i think this articulation is one of the thinking skills 
one of the uh, skills, competencies, they will be very, very important in the future. Because some people I know, their knowledge is very, not so much, but they are very creative and they are very articulate. So we, we find these people who can move forward when they are out of this university system. Next one, please. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is my hope and uh, my wish that every one of us, uh, whether we are in the universities or industry, we have to be part of the Malaysian uh, journey uh, towards, you know, higher income level, sharing of our income. And this must be done at all levels. We must have proper planning and effective implementation. I believe in this because sometimes we plan a lot of things, but we find it difficult to implement because we do not choose the right priorities. So all stakeholders, whether it's the government, the industry, but equally important, we in the universities must be able to propel our country to a better uh, development of progress. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tan Sri, for that wonderful insight. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, should you have any question, please type it in the chat box and we will select your questions accordingly. Okay, next, we will proceed with our Q&A session with Tansri, and I can see that we have several questions from the chat box. Um, Tansri, I will read the question for you. Okay, we do okay. one by one, huh? so that uh, okay. easier to find. Easier All one right. I can answer. The difficult one, Professor Bala will answer. Okay, so um, <laughs> we have a question with two likes here. So I'll go with this question first. The okay. question is, how to close the gap faced by the graduate? And how can policymakers, industry, and universities assist in this? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> briefly, I think uh, what is important to close the gap between uh, what we produce as undergraduate and the need industry is to ensure, to me, I think this is a common knowledge, where our uh, uh, curriculum, our syllabus, the subject that we teach is uh, is, is what demanded at the industry level. That's one. Secondly, I think very importantly is to ensure that our student activity, our student learning, and teaching at every faculty is very student focused, meaning faculty members must be able to create a passion to, 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 to acquire knowledge. And that's important. So every faculty member, to me, you have to have the passion to teach the best that you can. The last one is the platform that how you teach, the teaching methodologies, the teaching pedagogies. So these are I believe the universities are working on better platform because of the COVID, because they have to go hybrid, they have to go blended. It used to be only face to face, but now I think UTP, UMK is more well prepared in terms of delivering their courses through the uh, online and so on. But we, I believe that Online alone does not help. There must be a blended in the sense that some courses are done online, the easier one, but for the courses that are require practical and uh, discussion, you need face-to-face -face in the classroom as we normally do. I think I, I'll stop there. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tan Sri, um, for your comments. 
Okay, next we proceed with the second question. This question is kind of long, Tan Sri. Um, but I will read it for you, okay? Okay. So, Tan Sri, what is your opinion for graduate salary? Do the graduates have to set their own minimum salary? Or do we let the market force to determine our salary as the graduate? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I personally, uh, personally, yeah. Uh, I don't believe in uh, market forces. Sometimes, uh, totally, totally. Of course, uh, people in the industry said, uh, you know, the the wage level we find is is a level uh, when when you 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 determine the supply and the demand. But as a government policy initiative, the uh, for instance, the minimum wage which uh, Professor Bala was mentioning. And I've been involved with uh, uh, fixing the minimum wage for the last uh, 10 or 11 years. Because it creates a situation where the needs of the lower income group will be taken care. Even then, at the current rate of 1,200 in a major town and 1,100 in the uh, smaller town, is not enough for a working man to take care of family and so on because the cost of living has increased and so on but for graduates unfortunately because of the current situation because the current situation of covid and we can only hope and doa that it won't last it will just be over because the employers, industry, will try to get uh, employees, their new employees, as near as possible to uh, the minimum wage. Because they, they argue that you don't have a practical experience, you're fresh and so on. But I think, given the right situation, your economy will grow at a rate that was before pre-COVID, then I can only hope that the graduates uh, that are fresh, that get a job, will get more than what. Because the parents, they have invested so much, you know, in higher education. So they need a certain level to tell them that I have the knowledge, I have the experience, well, not experience. I have the capability. I have the competency to do a good job. Otherwise, they put you in the same uh, level or the same category as unskilled or semi-skilled worker, which is not good for graduates. Uh, for graduates, you know. And I understand. And I think uh, Professor Bala will concur with me because the current situation. Because the numbers of graduates are unable to get a proper job. They sometimes declare that, uh, this is according to the Ministry of Human Resources, they don't declare their qualification just to get a job. So they say, uh, I am SPM, my highest level called SPM. So when you get SPM, that means you get minimum wage. And in some sector, they don't even pay minimum wage, less than the minimum wage. So it's, it's to me, it's very sad, actually, for our country, because after so many years of development, uh, COVID has affected us so much. And I hope that this won't last. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Tan Sri. Um, as the future graduates, I also hope that this COVID won't last forever. Uh, all the best to you. <laughs> Thank you, Tan Sri. Okay, so the next question is um, more about academicians. So as an academic, um, in terms of academics, what is um, um, our role to ensure that the skill required by industry is in line with the current development of technology and current challenges? Okay, I think uh, the challenge to me, uh, as uh, I can see in a general term, uh, 
uh, first the role of the faculty as i indicated just now the role of the faculty the dean and the management of the faculty uh, or even the top management of the university is to ensure that every faculty will go through this process regularly in the sense that they keep track of what is needed what are the kind of competencies that are needed at industry in the industry so i think collaboration as in this forum between universities and industry is a welcome move and it should happen every time so that faculty members know what industry is doing and at the same time industry must understand the constraint of the university i know sometimes it's difficult for a faculty to change the curriculum because there will be plenty of discussion uh, it will take a, a lot of time to get a new course into the syllabus and so on and uh, because of this uh, the, 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 the faculty have to arrange the, the priorities so that at the end of the day the student comes first to me that's the role of university of course to create knowledge to do research uh, to publish papers is also important but one can do this at the same time I mean as a faculty member you should be contributing to the well-being of your program and so on but on the individual side this is important sometimes uh, professors uh, academic universities I'm not sure about UMK or UTP but I know some university uh, it's difficult to get them together you know because they are clever people you know don't you agree Esther to get yeah I agree that's true to, to get working as a team may not be uh, as easy as we think but nevertheless to be a academic my from what I observe and from my experience one has to be very passionate like a teacher in your school if the teacher is very passionate about teaching the student will always remember him or her betul tak huh? so a faculty member a team be said i know they have a lot of responsibilities they have to do their own research they have to write papers they have to do all sort of thing to get money to do research and so on but we shouldn't leave uh, teaching as it is you must be able to you know to teach uh, the best way you can and the student demand that and for all the faculty members i always uh, you know i have younger friends in the faculty give the student the best take care of them and they remember you for for life you know so when when they graduate they always remember uh, this was my best teacher this was my best lecturer right so i think responsibility in short as the one is a faculty to work together one is also the, the other one is individual faculty members they must contribute to their best ability so when we talk about competencies of student uh, we must also address competencies of lecturers some are better than others of course but you have to be the best okay Esther thank you thank you Tansi um, if I uh, may add uh, some more uh, in my opinion I agree with you Tansi because as a student myself I believe that um, both lecturer and industry people uh, should collaborate in order to prepare us as a student uh, yes. in the future soon. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, okay. Tansi. You, you're a final year student, are you? I'm in my second year. I'm uh, going for my internship. Yeah. So you're doing, you're doing good. You are doing well. Thank you're you, very Tansi. brave, you know. Some <laughs> students won't, won't dare to be a MC, you know, like a forum like this. Uh, I must congratulate you and your faculty. Thank you so much, Tanshi, for the compliment. So that's all. I... Huh? No more questions. Huh? 
Tashi, actually we have some more questions, but okay. um, this should time, be time, our time. second. This should be our second last question. Is that okay for you, Tashi? No problem at all. Okay. So, um, yeah, this question, um, I have so much interest in this question. The mental health really affects in our way of working from home or learning from home. So, will there be any mental awareness program that should be concluded in the learning syllabus, Tansri? What do you think? Oh, you mean beyond me lah. <laughs> you know, uh, is it uh, is it because the the student are being challenged uh, in a different way because they are at home, they go through the uh, to the uh, internet and so on. There's a problem of uh, you know not getting the right uh, exposure and so on. It must be uh, challenging for student, but. Uh, I think if uh, there's a way that faculty members can help and it, it's also challenging for the faculty members. I understand uh, faculty members have to prepare. Uh, I mean online teaching is not as straightforward. You have to understand the system and then of course there's a problem about the system not uh, getting the right, you know, uh, uh, reaching the, the 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 student and so on, so uh, I mean uh, I wouldn't know the what what the student are thinking. Uh, I'm sure uh, that's why I mentioned earlier. I'm wondering uh, why uh, or rather uh, how come SPM result uh, this year better than the previous year because they are they cannot compare. One is online. Uh, uh, studying at home and then the other one is uh, full time uh, in the school <laughs> so uh, th that part uh, I'm afraid uh, Esther I'm not able to answer uh, but I think I'm sure faculty some faculty may have done a small research on their student how best to you know to engage them to engage them I know the pressure is so much Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Tan Sri, um, for giving your opinion regarding this. Yes, and I agree again that university is um, currently doing their job um, in um, making sure that all students will get um, all the knowledge they needed uh, yes. through online platform. Yes. Thank you, Tan Sri. So this will be our last question due to all the right. time constraint. Okay. okay. Um, so Tanshri, um, please give your opinion on how uh, to enhance our communication skills and how to instill entrepreneurship skills from um, high school itself or from university. Uh, what the, the first skill is what? Uh, um, enhance uh, entrepreneurship skills and communication skills. Okay, uh, okay. let me answer the communication skill part. Huh? I think uh, 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 I'm not sure because uh, if you read the uh, uh, information that I get, maybe it, it, it maybe it's different now. Uh, it used to be uh, in schools. Huh? In school, I don't know your experience, Esther, and your friend. In school, even during my time, uh, we don't talk much because the teacher will, you know you shut up, the teacher will say, you know. It depends on the teacher. But definitely, our school system uh, does not encourage uh, people to communicate in the same. The student, lah, the people. Lah. So this will be, uh, will be carried over when you go to the university. So that, that part, I think, is uh, maybe some are better than others, of course. But as I said earlier, uh, the, the, the fact that you are not uh, familiar with talking, you know, and uh, I emphasize articulation of ideas, articulation of knowledge is very important. For a student, I think you have to overcome the, uh, the stigma of not talking too much, you know. But uh, when I said articulation, you must be able to tell your listener uh, and answer your listener 
in the most uh, definite way with the knowledge that you have. Because it, it's just a matter of talking very often. And I think I am impressed with you, Esther. You, you talk well, you know, because maybe your upbringing, your school, your teachers are better, your faculty members are very encouraging. That part is very important. But on the side of the student, I think if they have knowledge, they they have to be able to articulate uh, like their professors or like their lecturers. Yeah? Entrepreneurship, uh, I'm not sure because every university now apparently have courses that teach uh, their, their students, their undergraduate to become entrepreneurs. But uh, I believe being entrepreneur is not only, uh, of course teaching is uh, to complement what you don't have. But I think some student, some undergraduate, they have a better background. Maybe their parents uh, are in the family business, uh, they have business, uh, uh, you know, they, they learn from their school days. And that would be, that's why I believe that uh, uh, let's, let's really study whether this program is needed entrepreneurship because not everybody will become entrepreneurs you know some will become some work in the bank work in the government sector they are not entrepreneurs only uh, no i mean uh, i think we we have a jerk the ministry uh, maybe 10 years ago have a jerk uh, approach oh we we lack entrepreneur we have a program not necessarily that <laughs> that's the best way because you must do a study of the total graduate numbers every year, how many are entrepreneurs? No, they work with somebody first, maybe in a family business. Uh, that one is okay. They they later on they develop. The parent or the father will pass down the business to them. But in most circumstances, uh, they work in companies or small enterprises, and you don't expect. Uh, apa ni uh, undergraduate to you know to buka warung uh, I don't think I don't know maybe pro bala can answer this well lah because he's involved with the training <laughs> so the the question is to me you have to do a study or maybe it has been done how many of our student population in the faculty in the various faculty are really moving into entrepreneurship. So that, that uh, I have to see what has been done by every university. Maybe UTP has done it, UMK has done it. But uh, I, 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 uh, you know, I feel that uh, entrepreneurship, uh, not necessarily buka warung, you are roti john. <laughs> you, you can join a big company, that's entrepreneurship. You can join the uh, industry. That's entrepreneurship. Some people prefer to work in the government. So, so th there must be a proper, what shall approach to that. Thank you. Thank you, Tan Sri. Thank you again. So, what I um I can summarize from your answer just now is that as for the communication skills, I believe that all the students should have their own initiative yeah. to um go out from their comfort zone, uh, turning themselves into uh, an extra extrovert person, I believe. Uh, they should balance the knowledge and communication skills. And for entrepreneurship, I believe that all universities should have um, some approach uh, in order to make uh, all the students uh, be exposed to the entrepreneurship skills. Thank you so much, Tan Sri. Um, thank you, thank you. I, um, I think we should stop here due to the time constraint. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much thank Nancy. you so much for listening. Yes, thank you, Tanshi. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, we can now move to our next uh, agenda, which is our forum session. We will proceed with the morning session forum titled Technical Skills versus Soft Skills that will be moderated by Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Kyron. This forum will include discussion about students' readiness on skills, industry perspective on skills, tips on securing job during pandemic, and many more. But before we begin, 
allow me to introduce our moderator for today, which is Associate Professor Technologist Dr. Khairul. Dr. Khairul is a certifi certified Malaysian Board of Technology, professional technologist, and a member of the IEEE International. Besides, Dr. Khairul used to be a master trainer in Computational Thinking Multimedia Development Corporation and was award awarded twice as an Excellent Service Award in 2011 under the Department of Polytechnic Education, Ministry of Higher Education. Currently, Professor Technologies Dr. Khairul is the Deputy Dean of Academic and Student Affairs, Faculty of Creative Technology and Heritage in the University of Malaysia, Kelantan. Dr. Khairul, you may take the floor from here. Thank you, Dr. Khairul. Um, Dr. Karu, uh, are you there? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have uh, keep talking without uh, on my microphone, so sorry. Okay, uh, uh, thank you to Miss Esther okay, uh, for your uh, great MC today. Okay, and then. Uh, Firstly, I would like to say thank you also to uh, Yang Berbahagia Professor Emeritus uh, Tan Sri Dr. Anwar. Okay, uh, that's a great pleasure okay, to, to, to see you, to meet you, and then uh, nice uh, speech that you give before. Okay, I have a great uh, knowledge that I got that. Thank you very much. And then uh, also to all of the audience, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera and welcome to this webinar. Uh, first, I would like to say uh, thank you very much to all of organizer committee who are very work uh, work very hard to organize on today webinar. Then uh, congratulations as well to both University of Malaysia Kelantan and University of Technology Petronas for a successful manage a collaborative to conduct research uh, and employability and work readiness issues among uh, graduates uh, from higher education institutions. Your hard working with a spirit of togetherness for the sake of nations is very proudly. So uh, this webinar has been basically designed and developed to introduce uh, you to some of the concepts which we will discuss uh, during the course of the today morning sessions. So I hope all of you have a good day. Yeah. Uh, now in current situation, we are facing uh, a very unprecedented situation in which we have basically go offline, go off online and conduct all of our daily life including teaching and learning online so hopefully one day soon we will back our normal life as before a coming of pandemic covid 19 so nowadays uh, we are living in difficult phase on our life so pandemic covid 19 come with a big effects to normal life before However, we must be managing our life wisely according to the current circumstances we are now. So to moving forward and make our life relevant with the current situations, the degree of personal quality skills in our self must be improved along the time. Especially for the graduates, for all of the graduates, all of you must be realized and aware with what our employers needs and they are expected to you while they decide to hire you working at their company or their organizations. So that uh, today we will listen to a serious and critical discussion on employability and essential skills were needed by employer for today and tomorrow. So our panel, which is consists of experts from industries and academicians, will discuss on hard skills versus soft skills. So with a themes of nation capacity building, 
uh, skills, competencies, and income generations. Discussion will be going around and appropriate some issues okay, in the scope of student readiness on skills, uh, industrial perception on skills, participation in extra co-curriculum activities and students uh, associations, uh, involvement in micro certifications, experience versus no experience, branding and marketing yourself and tips of securing jobs during pandemic. So that we have a lot of issues will be covered by all of our panel during these forums. Hopefully all of you will be enjoyed to hear these discussions. Please pay your attention and if you have any questions, please text it in chat windows provided in the systems. All of you may be having a lot of questions. So today we have our panel here with us. Let me introduce all of our panels. Today we have a Professor our respected professor, Dr. Balakrishnan Parasuraman. Uh, he's a professor of management, human resources and industrial relations from Faculty of Entrepreneurship and Business, University of Malaysia, Kelantan. We also have Mr. Anil Eskenir. He is one of the consultants from Talents Management and Culture, KPMG Malaysia. We also have uh, Dr. Ena Bhattacharya, she is a senior language and communication lecturer from Faculty of Management and Humanities Department, University of Technology Petronas. We also have uh, Associate Professor Dr. Faskulati Wiswera Rao. Uh, he is an uh, Associate Professor from Faculty of Medicine and Health Science, University of Malaysia, Klan, University of Malaysia Sabah. Sorry. Okay. All of them actually have a great experience will sharing with us today. Okay, so that's a very great time for us. So for your information, uh, if you need to post any comments, please utilize the chat windows and I will transfer them to the respective panels uh, after the Q uh, during the QA sessions after these forums. Okay. Uh, okay, I hope you all can participate in the sessions and now I thought I'm hand over uh, these forums to the Professor Dr. Bala Krishnan Parasuraman to present his opening remark first. Okay, please, Prof, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Associate Professor uh, Technology Science, Dr. Cairo. Uh, I'd also like to thank to all the distinguished uh, panelists uh, in this forum. Uh, first of all, I think uh, timely the, the, the I think the forum that we are going to speak on the issue on the skill, right? skill uh, that match between industry and what the student acquired in the university. I think Tansri already giving overview right, on the what supposed to do, and Tansri I think also uh, uh, link linking to the macro macro policies. What we do in the micro should be linked to the macro. Macro means uh, what the vision of the country, why you want to go. So we're talking about high income nation for last uh, 10 years. I believe uh, Ansri and uh, all of us, I think was involved in the setting up the policy for the labor policy for the country. But we already, uh, something that we missed out, some of the element that we should uh, uh, taking into a serious account that uh, we are not uh, very much, uh, you know, looking at the, what the current current situation happened. We are not ready to any situation. I remember, I think, uh, Tan Sri and then uh, Dr. Carol, in 1997, I think you all remember that we got Asian crisis. Huh? I'm really thankful to the, uh, our former Prime, Mini Prime Minister, Tun, Tun Dr. Mahathir, huh? who is the man behind to, to recover the whole whole economy industry. At that time, I think we are saving, we are having the same problem with the graduate. Graduates are always there. But the thing that, how we want to adapt to the industry, so today, uh, what Tansri said just now, the, the graduate today is a totally uh, a different uh, mentality. They are, they are not uh, graduate like those days. So we as a teachers at the school or at the university must understand them. Like what uh, Tansri said, Esther. Esther was like, you know, talking, even second year, she can talk, you know, right, uh, brave in front of the public, you know, she can speak well, and then she concise the issues and so on. 
So we need that kind of graduate. You must giving opportunity. Don't control them. Less teaching, giving more to them to do something. The talent is with them, within them. They are ready to explore. So like, for example, in my class, eh, I always talk to the student. You come up your talent, your thing. So I think I believe the Dr. Carol, uh, which I think we discussed today, will lead to the next 10 or 15 years. And I think the most important that the policy maker. I think it come from the, of course, our our honourable prime minister, because he's actually the chief person for our country. He's the one. I think he's doing a lot of things for country now. We can see that. But sometimes he didn't go to the micro level. So I think the the university, the industry, uh, you know, the employer association, employees association, and of course a lot of consultant and all these must work together. We don't isolate ourselves. And I believe. Private and public university must. This is what uh, Dr. Carol we take this initiative. Country, we are actually very much uh, thankful to the UTP. They are number one in, in in the world, and we are focus university also uh, number one in Malaysia on entrepreneurship. We feel that this collaboration, uh, IPT and IPTS, I'm telling public and private, is going to be some exemplary for other people to follow on. Like other big big university should work with the private university. We got a lot of a lot of uh, things that we can share together. So that's why I think this forum, I think this uh, seminar that initiated by uh, uh, expert from the UTP and from UMK is in line with our, our grant. The grant that we do, just we not just do it grant for ourselves, not for our promotion, but the grant goes to the people who are suffering outside. That is our student. We really much think our student is the most important. And then with this, I think we can see the big picture in the country later on. So that's so that our research that not stop at the university. We will go to like this public forum and also we go for the policy maker. And I think the graduate here in this room, I think they very much want to see something. The same thing like we lecturers also, we want to do something for them. And I think people outside also want to help us. So we need to help each other. And eventually, I believe our graduates are going to be top 10 like in like country mentioned like in Singapore, in Korea, and all these countries, even though their language is actually they speak Korea or Japan or you know, but they are they are they're putting together all unity and work as a team. And we Malaysia got different culture, different race, different religion. We put together and we want to be one Malaysia that we're going to bring our country to the next level. Thank you, Doctor Doctor Heru. That's all. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Bala. Okay, there is a good, uh, I think there is a great opinion uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Bala. Okay, uh, I think that because, uh, you know, because of the uh, pandemic COVID-19, uh, maybe what we know that uh, uh, the, 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 the policy makers actually uh, done their, their, their rule as well. And also for the another parties actually, for the employers do that and also in the universities do that. By the way, based on what uh, uh, Prof said before, okay, that is about uh, the, the bridging between each parties okay, to, 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 to making it more uh, reality. Okay, uh, so uh, based on the COVID-19 pandemic, also actually, uh, I think that all of the uh, all of the uh, people or graduates and employers as well, okay, uh, migrate or make some kind of transitions, which is uh, from the you know from a minerals or from the conventional activity before we are doing by face to face and as all. So we need, uh, that is the old skills that we covered, but by the way, uh, when we go into the COVID-19 pandemic, so uh, maybe we need some kind of a new skills, which is like uh, uh, digital skills or whatever. So uh, what are uh, the essential soft skills, uh, actually, up of uh, things that uh, our graduate needs, okay? uh, or any of us to secure an employment? Uh, during COVID-19 pandemics, okay. because I thought that we need a new skills, uh, especially in the during uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, what what is that? And then maybe Prof. Bala can be uh, give their their, their opinion, uh, your opinions about that, Prof. Uh, doctor, can you repeat your question? Because uh, okay. What? Okay, my question is, uh, uh, my question is about the skills that we need uh, in the era of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prof. Because, uh, yeah, because before this, our graduates maybe just uh, use their uh, conventional, uh, their old skills uh, before the pandemic COVID-19. 
maybe they have a new skills that we must be mastered uh, during the pandemic COVID-19. Okay, uh, I think uh, Dr. Carol, thanks for your question. I would like to take some of the initiative uh, already done by Talent Corp. Eh? I think Dr. Anna, Dr. Samita also involved in this uh, program. Eh? During the COVID-19, Talent Corp already initiated uh, how to, to help this graduate to, to get a job. So one of the uh, one of the area that we focus, we are going to coaching and mentoring. I think coaching and mentoring is very important and timely for graduate. Graduate, I think the skill that we imparted, and I give some two great examples. Eh? I coach two students eh, from UM and also from uh, USM. And one from USM is an engineering student. Uh, I think she's uh, uh, electronic petroleum engineering. The other one is actually from uh, business from University of Malaya. And I don't know what for them. And I just coach them what to do. Then the first thing I do, what the skill you need, you go to the LinkedIn, social media. I said, you better go to LinkedIn. In LinkedIn, there are many uh, industry, many employers, many people there. You just link to this uh, LinkedIn and you already start to talk to them. Eventually, I think that's one skill that students should have that uh, they go and talking to the other people. Network is very important. So skill, they already have everything. They know what to do. But the network is very important. They have go beyond the university. And finally, the, the results are fantastic, you know, because this student go and talk to the LinkedIn and suddenly the, the employer very much impressed with her, the way she talked, the way she, she communicate with them. And then finally, she got a job, you know, she was engineer now. And the salary is beyond salary. It's not a 1,500 today. She's getting 3,000 above. And she's a woman, you know, go and work outside with the men and all this. So how can she have this skill? Because she listened. She listened to her. So that I I can see that this is a skill they need. And another student, UM, she just go for intensive. And she's told me, Prabhala, I like to do business. And I uh, she want to be entrepreneur. Then I said, hey, what kind of entrepreneur? My brother is an entrepreneur. Oh, that's great. You just follow. So she needs some guidance. And then finally, she also bought a intensive one of the big company in Malaysia so technically I can see that they are good in both language in fact we, sh we should we should master in both language Malay and English we must proud to speak Malay many people think that Malay is not important Nancy I believe Koreans speak Korean Japanese speak Japanese Latin America speak the Spanish why are we not proud of our own language so we need to have both English and and Malay so that we can communicate wisely and then uh, work with others. So I believe apart from the communication skills, uh, language and so on, they need uh, for other skills, like entrepreneur skill. Entrepreneur don't misunderstand. Entrepreneur mindset is not when you study entrepreneur, you become no. It's an entrepreneur mindset. Meaning to say you like to work with the people. Like in this room, huh, there are many uh, great scholars in this room industry. So the student take opportunity to close speak with them. And by the time you're talking to them, then you know a lot of things. Like in my in my LinkedIn, I got a lot of HR manager. I got a lot of people working. So I say to my student, can you go and link with me and then talk to the HR manager? And finally, you will get a job. So the next question I'm asking, during the pandemic, what the company, what company is suffering now? Micro and also the, the employer, SME, they are suffering. They need your help. They don't want to do operation work. Operation work can be done for the people, low skilled people or club or whatever. They want your idea. They want your 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 your, your skill to, to to bring the profit to the country. So I remember uh, Brother Cairo when I graduated in 1991 for the USM and I, I got a one job in a logistic company in Klang. The first question the employer, uh, the HR manager asked me, I don't want to come here. You work just for the operation. I don't want. I want you to solve the problem. You are a graduate. You must think beyond the scope, beyond that. So you remember those days, even the, the employer. I already have this kind of mind. I think because of that, we are successful today. You go in this uh, room, you also go through the same. And Tansi was the same. So we are not guided by someone. We are not guided by the lecturers, guided by ourselves. So in fact, I'm not good in English. When I started in my degree in UK, I suffering a lot. I put a lot of effort, put effort. I meet people, I go and talk to people. And finally, I finish. I went to Australia, even the same thing. So. What do you mean that? It's actually your own enthusiasm. And I would like to tell the parents, parents, please give the opportunity to students to go expose themselves. And uh, during the pandemic, they are staying at home. Like parents, 
uh, you know, you know, uh, guided them and let them do a lot of things outside academic. You see, academic qualification not guarantee get a job. Even you get an A, not necessarily you get a job. But exposure in the club. That's why, uh, Dr. Cairo, I created BYC, Bursa Sam Investor Club. In this club, I can see some of my students already collaborate with the virtual uh, student uh, exchange program with India University. They do that themselves every day. I said, I can give money to you, you do it. And they come up with all creative ideas, you know. I believe that they are super students in Malaysia. We need to understand that. Don't blame them. They are no good now. I don't think so. Whether they come from overseas, whether they're locals, they are excellent students. I believe they're going to be super students if we're guided, like what Tansiri said. We as a lecturer, we need to think outside the box. Don't teach the slippers, don't teach the PowerPoint, but beyond the PowerPoint. <laughs> There's no PowerPoint actually of the Cairo. <laughs> it's actually what you go to be part of your life. You understand. You're, you're like I'm already 50 above, but I go with their life. You know, I understand them and then try to go with them. So I think I believe with this kind of scenario, they can. So the skill that really needs to be networking, entrepreneurship, and also enthusiasm for their life. You have to create. So we as a lecturer, be a mentor, be a men, a coaching and don't just lecturing and testing them in the final exam, but beyond that, you have to go do many, many things. So, outdoor activity is very important, Dr. Carol. Students today, they don't want to go involved, like sport, like extracurricular, like club, and or they don't want to do that. They say wasting time. But I believe this is a what industry want. The first question industry asking, do you have any experience? You must say, yes, what the experience? I conduct the like Esther, I have been the I have been the moderator, I've been the MC, I've been this. And they will be I didn't really look at uh, your qualification, your A or B, we don't care. What we care is how you bring out your experience at the university level to that. I think with that Dr. Carol, I think I answer some of the questions. Fundamental is uh, networking, entrepreneurial and uh, drive from their from self. Talent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Tabala. Okay. It's a great explanation. Okay, so we must be a uh, bit understand about that. So, the, the fundamental is about uh, our networking. It's also about the entrepreneurship uh, skills there. Then, of course, about our drive, uh, self, our uh, self-drive to ourselves, actually. Okay, so uh, based on that, okay, we, you are also talking about. Uh, maybe I will shift to the uh, Mr. Sunel. Okay, Mr. Sunel. Sorry, Mr. Anel with us. Sorry, okay, Mr. Anel with us. Okay. Uh, what uh, Prof. Bala said before is about the creativity. It's also about the soft skills, and uh, means that that is a very important. So you know, have we have a creativity, you have a communication skill there. But uh, with a difference, uh, industries actually, have, of course, they need a different skills. For the examples, maybe for uh, for, for for the industries uh, in the field of uh, engineering, maybe uh, maybe the skills of technical is more preferred to them compared to that communication skill. For the examples, okay, and then maybe uh, for the other different uh, fields such as. Uh, uh, science uh, or uh, social science for the examples so maybe uh, the skills of the communication skills the skill of the interpersonal skills is more important or uh, and more concerns to them compared to the technical skill but by the way okay uh, how uh, my question is uh, could be uh, manipulate or integrate together with a soft skills and technical skills uh, amongst our graduates to make it uh, them more marketable uh, uh, in the industries. So, uh, how about your opinions, uh, Mr. Anil? Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning. Thank you for inviting me as a panelist for this forum. So, my name is Anil. I'm from KPMG Malaysia. Uh, just to give you a brief introduction, we are part of the big four uh, professional services firm in Malaysia. Uh, I think that's a very good question. Thank you very much, Dr. Cairo. Uh, how do we integrate the soft skills and technical skills? I think essentially what's very important, I always tell students, is when you identify, when you are when you are about to graduate and you're about to look out for a job opportunity, it's very, very important for you to first identify what sort of industries that you intend to go into, right? And then that's the start from your career. 
And why do, why do you have to do so is because when you identify the industries, then you will put in more effort in understanding the companies, right? For instance, when a, when, when a, when a candidate is actually looking out for a career, I always tell candidates, identify top 10 companies that you intend to join. Reason being is because if you don't identify top 10 companies, you will not be doing further research in understanding the products and services, the expectations of the roles, because there will be many roles within the firm, right? And I think essentially it's very important for you to identify the role, read through the job description to see what is the expectations if you were to join the uh, particular uh, company, right? And this is how you can then align the expectation from an employer's perspective into a graduate's perspective. And when you have identified technical skills, that is required by the job because technical skills are then relevant to the jobs that you're actually applying. For instance, if you're applying for a data analytics role, you are required to be familiar with Power BI. You're required to be familiar with Python, C++. This is where then you can tailor it according to your needs and expectation to ensure that it also meets the expectations of the industry. I think essentially when you when students ask uh, answer soft skill related questions, uh, then there needs to be a strategy, right? In how do you answer questions? Uh, I have come across students who have mentioned I have good communication skills, I have excellent leadership skills, but how do you answer and how do you provide provide them a situation to show them that you have those skill sets? and you are able to manage difficult situations is also very important. It could be as simple as, tell me by yourself, right? Always students will tell that I am from, uh, I am from Kedah, uh, my, my family members are from here and stuff like that. But what's most important is the firm wants to know how you could further add value to the firm. So I always tell students, focus on the 3S concept, which is your strengths, your success story, and provide the employers a situation, an example to show that you are a good candidate for the future company, right? And I think when you answer soft skill related, uh, related questions, you got to highlight teamwork. You got to highlight longevity. You got to highlight collaborative mindset. You got to highlight problem solving skills. And and how do you attain these skill sets? Are uh, from your leadership participation. Today, as an employer myself, when I look out for graduates, when I interview candidates, I look for an all rounder. When I see an all rounder. I look for a balance of both worlds, not just the academics, but also your co-curriculum participation as well, because that will further add value to your job that you're going to take up. And I think it's very, very important. No point hiring a student with, uh, who has a CGPA of 3.9 or a four flat CGPA, but the students are unable to articulate their interests. They are unable to explain what do they intend to do. So that's where it is also very, very important, right? And, and, and they are, when they are asked regarding the, uh, these uh, questions on situational based questions and most times it will relate to your soft skills as well right how do you manage situations how do you solve problems I always tell students to refer to the star concept if you follow the star concept you will never go wrong right and what is the star technique concept you provide them a situation you explain the task that you had to complete what were the actions that you needed to take and how was the result of the whole situation. So this is where you will provide an employer a situation. No point telling today that you have good leadership skills, but if you don't put it in, in simple terms and you provide them an example, they wouldn't be able to understand, right? But if you explain in detail, and that shows that you stand out as compared to the other graduates. Okay, let's move on to technical skills. Technical skills is where it's actually very, very important for students to understand. If you apply for a technical role, there will be certain expectations. Uh, but for instance, if you apply for a data analytics role, there are certain firms that will offer a technical test, right? So it's not all about just asking questions, technical questions during the interview, because sometimes firm will also require you to do a technical test and they would require you to be familiar with uh, some sort of language or a programming language that is, that is much relevant to the job that you're actually applying for. For instance, if you are applying for a consultant role, right, uh, whether it's KPMG or any other firms, you need to have good project management skills, right? When I say good project management skills, it involves many different aspects from budgeting, from cost reduction, from risk management. Are you able to also 
uh, take on this kind of skill set. So this is very, very important for students to first identify what sort of skills have you acquired throughout your years of journey, right? And what uh, Dr. Bala mentioned earlier, Prof. Dr. Bala mentioned earlier, it's very important for you to be active on, on uh, LinkedIn, right? Because LinkedIn is a powerful tool for you to connect back to the industries. But at the same time, students also have to understand LinkedIn also allows you to showcase your technical skills and your soft skills that you have and you have acquired throughout your degree. And this is where then it can then illustrate better on what sort of skill sets they've actually acquired in your career. Technical skills and soft skills will go hand in hand when you answer questions, especially during an interview, right? Because what a firm wants to know is whether in the areas of soft skills, are you able to work collaboratively? Are you able to fit into the company culture? We don't want to hire robots. We want to hire people who will uh, also work hard at the same time play hard, right? And, and this is essentially very, very important to the industry, right? At the same time, in terms of technical skills, you must first identify what sort of career that you are looking to gain, you are looking to uh, attain, right? And this is where then you can then break down, right? Identify what are the technical skills required Certain jobs may require you to be familiar with a certain platform. Are you familiar with the platform? And how do you identify that? It's by reading through the job description, identifying the technical skill sets that you need to be familiar with before attending an interview. This is when then you can further brush up your skill sets and to see if there's anything else that you need to be familiar with and need to gain further exposure before you attend an interview. So uh, I think it's very, very important uh, to identify what you intend to do then only you will be able to collaborate between uh, the technical skill sets and the soft skill sets. Over to you, Dr. Carroll. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Anil. Very good explanations about that. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the integration between the technical skills and the soft skills, I thought is very important. And then what you want to turn to do and what you want to turn to be, so we must be decide that and we must be realize that that uh, what kind of skills that we need to uh, improve and to, to gain in ourselves so uh, maybe doctor uh, has a maybe dr enna uh, has a academicians i will i will shift to the dr enna to ask a question has a academician actually uh, regarding to what art what uh, uh, mr anil uh, uh, give the opinions before there's about the personal skills and also about the uh, soft skills and also about the technical skills. So uh, as the academician, actually, we always uh, 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 on sense and focusing on the uh, you know the cognitive skill, which is uh, based on the academic skill as well. But by the way, uh, uh, the technical skills or maybe some sort of uh, uh, employability skills there or soft skills there are not uh, really uh, in, uh, are not really embedded in the in, in the uh, our curriculums actually so how 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 to be uh, mix uh, the uh, employability skills or personal skills uh, should be uh, you know uh, the way to make uh, embedded in the curriculums uh, then the way when we want to teach our uh, students based on curriculum that we are have or uh, now so uh, maybe dr henna have any uh, opinions about that thank you so much uh, dr carol um, mm. i think the most famous question before anything begins is can you hear me <laughs> yes <laughs> okay thank you so much um, good morning to everybody. Thank you to all the esteemed speakers, the MC, and everybody present here. And uh, thank you, Dr. Cairo. And in reference to your question, um, it's coming from various dimensions, if I may share. Uh, one, as an academician, and two, as an educator as well. Yeah? One is from our own experiences that we have incurred. Okay. Probably this will bring in some own personal experiences as well, yeah? Um, definitely in terms of skill requirements, it has changed over the years. Um, in my own PhD thesis write-up, uh, I looked at communicative competence as one of the major uh, areas of interest because communication skills is what I, I lecture uh, here in UTP. 
So even in that, uh, the the interviews with engineers, the interviews with engineering lecturers, and the interviews with uh, language lecturers provided me, as well as with students, provided me with um, various uh, various um, ammunitions that they considered important in their relevant fields. So definitely different groups, or what you call them as communities of practice, like um, um, Anil is from the um, professional community of practice belonging to a certain industry. Um, we are from the academic uh, community of practice. So definitely there will be um, certain different emphases of importance on what type of skills we consider. Yeah, um, For industry players, uh, um, some may be very structured. They like to have their presentations. If I if I refer it back to presentations and talking and sharing, um, some may like it to be very structured. Okay, so you report as per what it is. Whereas some, for on the other hand, would like to see that it is an integration of yourself, including your personalized self in the presentation. So that's where the soft skills also come along. Even if you are an expert in your field, in your technical knowledge, your you know all your background knowledge of your area that you are specialized in, soft skills will also help to propagate and project those uh, those technical elements even better. Um, if I may share with you a uh, simple example, a very simple example. Uh, I've also worked as a waitress in, in Pizza Hut many, 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 many years ago. Yeah. And um, sometimes you may think that that's just a part time job, you know, oh, there's nothing to it. But mind you, when I went for the interview, sharing, taking on the same uh, uh, position of what uh, Anil was sharing and talking about interviews, mind you, the interviewer actually picked on that. He actually asked, and he was the first person, uh, Prof Halit, he was the first person who asked about that. And I was shocked myself because all the while we're thinking, Oh, people have emphasis on technical skills, your knowledge on the subject matter. Can you do this? Can you do that? But sometimes people ask you on this and it was surprising enough. And um, he asked the question, what did you learn from this experience? You know, so um, never look, look, look down to all your experiences. I have my postgraduate student who is with me as a research assistant. And I'm so proud of him because he said, He's working uh, with his brother in car washing. When I saw that, I was so touched. I was saying that this guy has is going to succeed because he has no barriers to whatever he thinks. He's striving out there and he's doing his very best, taking whatever it, it takes to be a person in the society and community. So back to that question, uh, when he asked me, what did I learn from this? I said that, um, I learned valuing people. I learned valuing people is very important. No matter where and what you are, what you hold, you must always value people. So, so this does not come in as part of the curriculum, but it comes in as something you learn while you're there in the field, in the work place in the working environment you have different people to deal with you have you have friendly customers you have some customers who 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 behave otherwise you know but these are the things you take in and that's where your learning comes in so coming back to the question as from the point of an academic as well i think there has been enormous amount of uh, ways that the university is also striving and looking into of um, equating soft skills and technical skills. For example, if I may share, we have a lot of uh, MPU4 programs. Yeah, um, these are uh, some kind of uh, non-examination programs where students involve and work with the community. And in UTP, we have had tremendous various 
whole lots of activities where students reach out to the communities and not only local local community in Malaysia but also that abroad yeah so they've had programs in helping maybe um, some environmental problems that are faced in the local community the students have to find solutions the students have to find ways to reach out to them and provide some solutions and we always look at how the students can make an impact to the lives so it's not only of a one-off project that's it I finished I got my credit hours and that's it bye bye but we say make sure you also sustain recently in my group uh, we've had students who were working with the B40 community so the B40 community was a group where they had skills they had talents they wanted to sell this you know they had some entrepreneurial ideas and all but the project that we had was to actually provide some guidance so in this aspect students have to focus have to search have to find what it needs to meet the audiences or the clients needs yeah so we can go on on this um, but like as we say in terms of the curriculum I think there has been tremendous change there has been tremendous growth all universities are doing their very best in trying to provide as many experiences to the students not only in the form of an academic way through all the tests and papers but more so also through the non-paper based assessments yeah so these are some of the many ways we can think of and also we encourage students to volunteer and do work that provide back to the community it's always uh, one of our uppermost uh, focus as well um, what else can I say on this um, I think that learning ownership is very much self-driven and I think this is a recurrent theme that we see running through right from Francis talk to Prof Ballas to um, the speakers earlier before me um, we find that being self-driven is is an crucial element so which is better technical or soft they definitely go hand in hand but learning is always ongoing yeah um, for us lecturers if I talk from the aspect of an academician um, learning online online has been a buzzword there for centuries it's not something new but it's been there and it's locked somewhere you know we've been so happy with face to face but the pandemic situation has actually brought out the best in us in making us turn around and making sure that we try to actually reach out and meet uh, as much as possible make it a very lively interaction with students yes there are challenges there is online fatigue uh, but many things can be done to uh, try to make it as creative as possible and in that sense we hope the very best that what we offer to our clients our students uh, would be nowhere less yeah okay so um, so far this is what I can capture and, and, and provide at the moment uh, from the aspect of uh, of an academician in the university thank you dr. Carol okay uh, thank you Ratana thank you very much for your uh, explanations and for your uh, opinions about that that's very great okay. thank you. Uh, so uh, I, I think that when going back to the uh, mr. Arnold's because uh, mr. Arnold's uh, just the only one from the industries I think so uh, uh, maybe have we have a different perspective from the industries actually yeah, uh, in, in my question is uh, regarding to the hard skills uh, versus of soft skill, uh, which is in terms of the student readiness. Okay, uh, and then uh, during in the current situation, which is we have a, a pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen crisis here. So uh, you know the hard skills and soft skills. It looks like. Uh, uh, it's like going down, you know, because uh, uh, at the universities actually uh, we are not really have the uh, solid and concrete solutions to solve uh, the, the problem, convey or to manage uh, how to teach our our students, okay, uh, in the in the terms of the hard skills and then of course in the terms of soft skills as well. 
based on the uh, online learning, okay, how to teach in the hard skill and how to teach in the soft skills okay, in the sides of the uh, university is a very challenging as well. So uh, maybe uh, in the side of uh, industries, they have uh, their own perspective okay, uh, to, to maybe to inculcate or to gain uh, the, 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 the skills okay, in the hard and also the skill in the soft okay, to make uh, uh, your employees, maybe in the current employees at the industries, okay, to make them uh, more uh, competence or high competence in their uh, in their task. So, uh, how about your things, uh, Mr. Anya? Thank you, Dr. Uh, Kairo. Uh, so, first of all, uh, maybe I give a brief introduction. So, Esther and Yasmin, uh, the organizers of this event, uh, is actually, uh, they are the KPMG ambassadors. Uh, so, two years ago, uh, I wanted to launch a program uh, where uh, my team, uh, from KPMG, we are able to actually mentor students, yeah? so whether it is soft skills or technical skills, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So at this point of time, my team is actually mentoring 80 students across 12 different universities in Malaysia uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and, and this is our focus on technical skills and soft skills. So what we actually do, uh, we, must, uh, we all must agree that COVID-19 has accelerated the acceptance of technology. So today, attending a webinar online is pretty common, right? And, and this is where students can then leverage on this kind of opportunity. But what students should also understand is to facilitate the growth mindset, to ensure that you stay relevant and to consistently build up skills in order for you to uh, be uh, marketable as well in the industry, right? And, and apart from KPMG's initiatives of organizing webinars, just a couple of weeks back, we had a webinar with UTP students it's called Ask the Analyst as a data analyst, right? And we had close to 100 over students participating in this. So in terms of the industry perspective, we will continue this effort to guide students in various technical perspectives. Every single day, my team has at least two to three webinars, be it soft skills or technical skills. And we get our uh, consultants, our auditors, and also our tax consultants from the service lines to actually guide students. And, and we work closely with the lecturers as well. I think it's very, very important for us as an industry to bridge the gap, right? So that's why I created this program that will bridge the gap between academicians and also the industry and to work hand in hand. That is why I also reach out, like for example, I reach out to Dr. Savita to identify what are the key topics that we can actually do as part of guest lectures within the university as well. So for instance, if uh, uh, if a lecturer is teaching information technology, maybe KPMG can come in during the session to actually deliberate a workshop for the students on the industry perspective on that particular module. So this is where we got to work hand in hand from the industry and also the academicians to provide exposure and to manage the expectations of students, right? If students think, okay, maybe I find this subject interesting, information technology, I should look out for a career that is information technology related, right? At the same time, I should also leverage on this kind of opportunities where uh, my lecturers are also reaching out to the industries to get the industries to share their perspective. So that could be a pathway for them to consider for their future careers and it builds their interest along the way as well. I think that's very, very important, right? At the same time, um, students should also leverage on various opportunities that are provided online. There is also a platform called Coursera that allows students to, to take on virtual e-learnings for free, right? Where they don't even have to pay. And, and this e-learnings is actually focused on various perspective, yeah? So for example, KPMG is also working closely with Coursera that we allow students to take a data analytics virtual internship at their own pace, meaning that they can do it at their own time. There is a video for them to watch to identify what are the areas that they could further develop themselves within the areas of data analytics, because data analytics could be applicable in all industries, not just someone with a technology background, but they could also be applicable to accountants, it could be also applicable to marketers as well. Right? That is where students should also leverage. There are various competitions where uh, students can also be participating in. Business case challenge, right? And, and I believe that uh, when, you, when you have 
uh, the exposure to participate in business case challenge, you will then identify what is the real issues that companies are currently facing and how, as a student, you Hello, hello, Dr. Uh, hello, Mr. Anil. I, did, I didn't listen to you. Are you there? Hello? Maybe technical teams, please take charge for this. Okay, I think he's on. Can you hear me ah, now? Okay. Ah, okay. okay. Now, now we're here. Please proceed, stand here. Okay, sorry, sorry. Right, okay, so as I was saying, uh, I think it's very, very important uh, for students to identify unique opportunities for you to grow your career and to develop different skill sets in order for you to prepare yourself for your future careers. Even myself, right, today I, so I'm a consultant myself because today, uh, it, when it delivers reports to our stakeholders, we don't deliver reports in Excel. We deliver reports using Power BI, right? And and you may not have the knowledge. It's okay. We learn over time, right? And then this is where you can uh, further develop yourself in order for you to prepare yourself uh, for your future career. So never limit opportunities, right? Uh, and it doesn't matter which background that you come from. You must always put that mindset away that, okay, I'm an accounting student. I can only do accounting related jobs. Today, we are looking for diversity. We are looking for diverse skill sets that could further add value to our clients, to our customers, and, and that this could be applicable to various industries. I've seen, I've seen engineers who become consultants. I've seen uh, 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 accounting, accounting students who become data analysts, right? And this is where you should also have that mindset that you should uh, take up different e-learnings, different certifications for you to be well prepared for your future career so never limit your learning opportunities always open to be uh, always open to taking up different uh, uh, learning uh, tools right in order for you to prepare yourself for your future career uh, uh, also participate in a, a lot of online uh, e-learnings like for example like i mentioned earlier coursera right participate in industrial webinars even on linkedin like what uh, prof bala mentioned earlier there are a lot of leaders from different industries that continuously share and they have uh, uh, webinars on LinkedIn as well that will share with students their various perspectives. And you never know, they could be your future boss, right? So this is where you could for, uh, further develop yourself and participate in all these kind of areas. Hope that answers the question. Over to you, Dr. Cairo. Yeah, yeah thank you, Mr. Anand. Actually, I want to shift to the, I want to move to the uh, Dr. Rao. By the way, I have some question to ask to you because that is very interesting, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, 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 because you said uh, the last word is about the multi uh, some like a multitasking, isn't it? So means that uh, the student must be masters in a lot of skills and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, capability or specialized they need to do. So uh, in, your in your, maybe in your experience or in your perspective as an industry uh, player, okay, uh, are you mean that uh, multidisciplinary is more important, is compared than a specialization? Uh, how do you think about that? Yes, I, I, I do think so, right? Uh, although you may specialize in a specific degree, right? Uh, for example, you have an accounting degree, but maybe you specialize in taxation. But I think uh, in, in today's uh, situation, right, uh, with the uh, challenging market, I, I think you need to expose yourself to various skill sets. I was looking at the questions earlier that was also asked by the participants, right, on, on what sort of uh, on how many skill sets that I should acquire throughout my journey in university. There is no number to it. As long as you are able to take it up, go ahead, right? And what's most important is to identify. This is what I'll tell students. You should always treat your LinkedIn, for instance, as a living organism, right? Then you see, you, 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 you become very competitive because you see that you have updated certain skill sets. But your, your peers within the same community has updated 20 skill sets. It's because they have actually acquired those skill sets. And this is where you can see that students from, from various backgrounds, they actually acquire different skill sets that will be actually essentially helpful for their future career. And, and this is something that I want students to have that mindset that uh, you shouldn't be from a specific background that you can only acquire those skill sets. It's all open. 
and uh, and in order for you to be uh, to stay relevant and also to stay marketable in the industry. Okay, okay, great, great, great input. Thank you, uh, Mr. Anil. Okay, uh, I would like to move to the uh, the Rao. Okay, the Rao there. Okay. Okay, Dr. Rao, uh, what we are talking uh, and discuss with uh, Mr. Anil before is about the, uh, we want to facilitate or we want to make our students uh, going uh, masters in more than one skills actually. So they must be have uh, some kind of multitasking that uh, we must be give to them. By the way, uh, in, in sight or in perspective of the academicians, uh, maybe Mr. Rao can, uh, sorry, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rao, Associate Professor Dr. Rao can be uh, 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 give your own opinions in your perspective, actually, uh, in the terms of, in the aspect of the uh, extra curriculum activities at our, uh, at the universities, actually. Are you think uh, by going the extra co-curricular activities uh, there will be inculcate uh, our students or gain uh, their, 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 their personality, personality, personal quality skills or employability skills there? Uh, Associate Prof. maybe you yeah. have comments about that, please. Thank you so much, uh, Peter Carroll and all the eminent uh, panelists here. So it was really a wonderful uh, discussion since past one hour. So all the bright uh, talent experts have given lots of thoughts about it. Yeah, I would uh, I would agree uh, on most of the points and all the points by the eminent speakers and especially Mr. Anil has uh, nailed everything down and he has not left anything to other speakers. So, well, uh, First and foremost, I would say is braveness is most important than any other skills. As as Tansi was mentioning, you know, he Tansi was appreciating the MC. So braveness is very most important thing than technical skills and soft skills. Once you have that braveness, then definitely you can sharpen your soft skills and technical skills. Coming to soft skills and technical skills, it's all about like chicken and egg which one is first. So, definitely they should go hand in hand. But according to the situation, you have to use them wisely. Whenever soft skills are in, you know, required, so you have to use them very much wisely and you have to show, say for example, when you're going for an interview. So you must sell yourself showing what kind of soft skills, you know, especially the communication skills play a bigger role there and also leadership leadership roles and you can also inform them the problem solving how you can solve the problem existing in an organization it can be an industry it can be a university or it can be any ngo so then you can also emphasize on teamwork so how much are you ready to work in a team and also how much are you you know contribute to the organization if they recruit you to work as a leader and to make the things happen individually and also with the teamwork so you should you should emphasize more on that as well and another thing is you can also mention to the panelists or to the interviewers how best you are in the decision making if a certain scenario the earlier mrs sunil was mentioning about it uh, star situation uh, task action and reason so maybe you can you can try to uh, you know explain that in a very you know good scenario you can create a scenario and you can explain well so that is most important and when it comes to the technical skills when you are recruited into the organization so you have to show your technical skills and before that also some of the organizations they will try to test your technical skills say for example in uh, uh, one of the interviews which one of my students atten attended it, it was in india way back almost 10 years back so when he went for interview the panels they literally asked him to draw the formulas and ask him to do the calculations which means you know they are checking your uh, technical skills 
real time. So which means they should be having technical skills and also soft skills hand in hand. And also another thing, before we are delving more into technical skills and soft skills, it is not just only the student. It's not only the student's role to play in, you know, attaining the soft skills and technical skills. It is every one of us, our duty as a mentor or as a lecturer or as an educator, even the, you know, the faculties, organizations, everyone is responsible to make, you know, uh, the students to have more sustainable skill set. It can be technical skill or it can be soft skill. As I could see one of the questions from the participants, uh, whether he was, uh, it's a very good question also, whether, you know, the, the technical skills are very much less learned in the universities. And when it goes to the industry, how skills are being asked, which means whenever we are training a student, say for example, for every course on every area of research or every area of expertise, we have we have the students whom we have to train, say for example, final year projects. So there you have lots of interactions with your students. And from my personal experience, I will tell, once I assign a project to any student, so we try to discuss about the methodologies and research cultures. We, the, the way before we, they start are executing the work in the laboratory. Then later on, most of the time you spend the time with them how to deal with the current situations. It's not about uh, always you need to discuss about the project. You can discuss about the project, you can set the goals, and they are also mature. Our students are mature so that they can understand and they know what they have to do. If they do not do, and they know what are the consequences they will face. So. We, we have to set the goals at the beginning when we are starting the project with them. Then most of the time we should train them uh, on soft skills and how you can uh, try to adapt to the new situations. So that's where, that's where we have to play a bigger role. That's what I strongly believe. And another point is, uh, another, another question I have observed, what about the current situation? Say for example, we don't we don't understand since I am in the medical faculty now, and uh, even my research is completely on biomedical research. So, we we cannot say the pandemic will go off soon, and also we cannot say that this pandemic is the last pandemic in the world. No, there may be more pandemics. So, according to the situations, according to the pandemics, we have to or according to the natural disasters we have to train ourselves and we have to adjust ourselves to the new normal. Which means the students or the faculty members, this is not only for the students, even for the faculty members, we also need to be trained in e-learning and also how to utilize the computer skills, you know, aptly. Otherwise, uh, we will be, you know, lagging behind. So we are nowhere, even though we are very good with uh, lots of technical skills and we are you know very good with the traditional you know mode of training however if the world is going in a different way the students and the researchers industry partners every one of us per se as a whole we have to deal with the current situation and we have to go with the current scenario in a proper way that we have to follow the new normal which is e-learning and also, uh, even one of the speakers uh, was mentioned about it, uh, about Coursera and other stuff. Even Prabhupada was mentioning how exactly, uh, you know, the students have to play a role to get uh, good employability. Uh, even the academic situation has been clearly given by Dr. Ena. So these are my few points and my two cents for this uh, forum discussion. So over to you, Dr. Khairu. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Wow. Okay. Very interesting opinions. Yeah, what I'm talking about is the right things that uh, our uh, graduate must be alert with what kind of uh, uh, skills are they must be uh, must 
must be uh, maskers okay so uh, i thought that maybe uh, prof bala uh, uh, have a, a different perspective uh, uh, especially uh, to uh, gain okay, the skills uh, among of our uh, graduate okay uh, especially in terms of the pandemic covid 19 you know uh because uh maybe have some kinds uh, that to be upscaling or uh, to be rescaling uh, you know uh, skills uh, among our graduates after the graduations uh, maybe okay to make them uh, employable okay uh, 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 from the employers okay so uh, uh, dr bala uh, sorry prof bala maybe uh, you can be comments a bit about the system of my certification that uh, i thought is already introduced at the universities so uh, how, how about the the, the 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 systems of the micro grad uh, certification and is it uh, university actually uh, ready to come up with uh, courses of the micro certifications okay uh, maybe probala can be uh, give your comments please prof uh, okay thanks uh for the uh, AP, yeah, as a professor of the Cairo, and also thanks to all the uh, respected panelists, huh? uh, Mr. Anil, okay, AP and G. I think uh, UMK are willing to work with you when you come to UMK. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was very impressed uh, with your ambassador program. I think uh, our, our students are ready. Yeah? Dr. Rao, you also are eh, in UMS, huh? All right, uh, and also thanks to Dr. Anna and also uh, Dr. Rao, right, who's from the medical background. I think uh, what uh, Prof. Cairo uh, was talking about uh, micro-edition, I think it's uh, one of the one of the best uh, way uh, to overcome the graduate employability. Uh, I think Dr. Cairo, I think fine for industry. I know, uh, Mr. Anil, can you take my serious my point? Uh? Those days, I remember uh, when I uh, when we all study in the university, the industry come and interview at the campus in the final year. You know, they don't come after they graduate. Why not? You all make a sorry, uh, I'm not advising, but I want to solve this problem. So why not? You all come on the final year and come and actually uh, come up with some kind of the you know what are the skill the students really need, and you can interview them, and you can find out you get you got time like four months to go for the employability. And you can, uh, you know, you can uh, synchronize them in order to 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 match. So I come back to uh, the question to Dr. Carol just now. Carol, I think that is a, one of the best way to accredited our, you know, the started university level. I think I think many industry are are willing to come to accredited. Uh, one one point that we saw here, I think most of you must understand here. I was telling you, you know, the Jabatan Kebangsaan Malaysia, the skill department they got all SKM SKM. Four and five now, and these skill why cannot bring to university? There are there are some courses that you know they can accredited the student before they go. Why we only focus to kind of uh, outsiders, but we bring to the campus. I always I was tell my team also Dr. Carol Dr. Nick, eh? we always thinking that we can bring this this skill to the university, and maybe the, during the second year or third year they can start have a skill based certification. As you know that this uh, skill skill department, they have freely thousands courses, you know, available, which developed by the industry. It's not totally academic, and they are very practical. So the moment that we can bring this one inside the campus, and we can start certify while they are doing technical knowledge, cognitive knowledge on the specialization subject, what they do. But I believe this kind of skill can bring along the which line, and then they can expose themselves different kind of situation. Uh, that's happening in the outside world. I always believe that the outside world, the what they learn in the campus, it doesn't match to the what happened. But, but they have this kind of knowledge that uh, they know how to like a uh, few speakers highlight the teamwork. Okay, the teamwork only started in the campus. I always tell my students, and I give you always a problem. I don't, I don't, Mr. Anil, I don't bring the problem to me. They solve the problem. I give very example. Ah, this is Mr. Anil. Ah. There's one time in our our reason uh, group of assignment, uh, there are problems, you know, in the group, and the leader come back to tell me. I said, you solve the problem. I don't solve the problem. Why need to solve the problem? This is what the industry want. So they, if you bring back to the problem to your supervisor, manager, then something wrong with you. And finally, they solve the problem, complete everything, and then it's kind of like they know what to do. 
and this is an example I, I I put it in the in the within the within the project work and so on that what you said just now mentioning how to match the source and then the uh, technique you cannot separate it in fact you cannot teach them you know you cannot teach them soft skill because it's already inside their mindset so micro uh, just now uh, said okay it's actually the right time to do that and I think MKA eh, our good friend eh, yang yang bahagia Professor Mama Sata right he is willing to work with industry Mr Ne. He is willing to work in Australia and the university. He is a very free, open-minded. He was an UC for for the past uh, few years as a VC. I know him very well uh, personally because we involved in the beginning on the soft skill and core curriculum. I think when you talk core curriculum, what a core curriculum is supposed uh, embedded with our curriculum. So students think that core curriculum is not important. You know, they think that so why not we give some credit, uh, Dr. Carol, credit them in core curriculum so that. When they come out, they have a both, you know, so that the industry immediately no need to talk about soft skill. Am I right, Sunny? You agree with me? Why you talk? Why you need to talk about soft skill? Why you need to talk about technical skill? They are come here. I am ready to help you. I'm not asking my salary now. Okay, give me six months. I I'm, I come out with this formula. Very easy formula, Mr. Sunny. Give them six months. Give the salary to what they want. After six months, they will left the organization. They will resign by themselves. Why? You give the KPI six months. From now, you will pay three thousand. What is the KPI to achieve? If they don't achieve the KPI, they will resign. You don't need to sack them. You don't need to go to labor court. Don't need to industry court. <laughs> they will do themselves. So this is a new approach. I think, Dr. Carol, we need to impart it to the student. That means the employer no need to worry. You give the job. You give the. I mean, don't go for minimum wage, lah. As what Tan Sri and uh, myself, because we are in eleven years in the in the committee, national committee. I and Tan Sri working on this for the unskilled people. But the time to come now, high skill people. That's a graduate. Graduate salary based on the KPI base. If you cannot solve the industry problem, why you go to industry? For me, no need to go. Like I'm the professor, the Dr. Rao and Dr. K. We are come. We know what to do. So today we are doing promoting our university, UTP and UMK, and many people will solve. That is how we bring the good reputation for the, our organization. Like what Mr. Sunny said just now. Before you go to the industry, you must study the industry background. He even don't know who's the CEO. You don't know who's the who's uh, uh, the man behind the company and how he could apply job. In fact, sorry, I'm asking some student. Do you know the VC or not? They say, who's that? Uh, so I start inculcate them. You should know who is your dean. Who's you know your lecturer or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, like that. What do you mean? Yeah, go to YouTube. Look for them. You can study. So you know, recently, uh, uh, Sunil, I, I I I got LinkedIn friend. Because some of my 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 LinkedIn people coming to uh, communicate with me, you know. So one one of the young le lecturer from Mumbai, huh? So uh, she wanted to uh, communicate with me, and I say, why don't you come and give a lecture to me? And she's very energetic, you know, talking. Wow, they say student, oh, bro, we are going to Bollywood star. Okay, why not? I bring the Bollywood to you. And you, you see the enthusiasm? You make them wow. And then suddenly she coming and she talk like you know young. She's very young and then talk and enthusiasm, and they feel like totally different. They are going to the abroad from the Malaysia. So who to blame? I don't blame anyone. I don't blame the industry. I don't blame the lecturers. I don't blame anyone. We need to start something from now. We don't just talk talk this. I don't want. I don't want Mr. Anil come another forum talking of the soft skill. No, Mr. Anil will come next time. Hey, you got the best talent from UMK. I I saw like like Esther, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you know many students, you know, like uh, Anis and all these students actually already contributing to the building to the nation. Again, we are looking for the country. Where will the country want to go? You want to be like Korea? I went to Korea few years back, um, Sunny. They are totally different. They are they are like want to go explore themselves to other country, you know. So you can see the difference between them because you know why they are proud to be their nation, and the same time they want to contribute to, to outside. This is what I see in many many countries. The professor, sorry, Dr. Rao, professor never utilized by our country. Do you know professor from Korea? They go to the Brazil. They set up the company. They go to research, come back and tell the Samsung. Samsung fully utilized. Why KPMG cannot do like that? Sorry, I'm asking the question. Mr. Anil, you can use our capacity. We are willing to work support you. Why not you utilize us to do something for the country? At the same time, we meet our graduate. So I think our graduate got talent. Everybody, otherwise, why they come to university? Am I right? Why they come to the university to study? Even medical student, doctor, I'm sorry, they don't know how to speak. I, I talking to the veterinary student, medical student. They don't smile, you know. How can you be doctor? You don't smile. You don't engage with people. You think that so, you know, they're very proud. You're walking like something. Hey, come on, like professor, lah. 
they don't talk to you. I think you're so smart. Ah. No, lah. your medical students are supposed to engage with the people. Pandemic, now you see, you're frontliner. You need to help. They don't spy. So what is the point you become a medical doctor? I say no point. You go to other profession. So people don't cannot smart, cannot talk, cannot any. So I'm Sanil. I'm very sad. I want to see you have to talk different ways of things. I, I don't blame Sanil. I'm very, I'm very pity of you because you are doing a lot of things like ambassador program, everything. That this is actually very good initiative you've done. You're bringing the industry inside the campus. I think we enter, we are UMK and Dr. Cairo, lah, Dr. Nick, lah, we are doing a lot of activities in the campus. You come and see our campus, vibrant. We're doing a lot of program for the student. The, you know, Sunny, they can set up the company in the in the campus. We're giving money for them. And we can uh, start a business on the campus and business can be anything. Like example, I, I'm going to set up a company like, let's say, consultancy. Can you can come and do that together. So why not we separate ourselves? Don't be separate because we are paying the tax money from the private company, Dr. Cairo. We are using private taxpayer and they pay us now. And the graduate go unemployed. Hey, very sad. Lah. What is going on in our, our, our scenario? Suppose those pay the taxpayer, these students go out and help the industry to grow the industry. And I believe our graduate can be done like that. We don't talk about salary. I always don't talk about salary. Salary will come later. And uh, Sunil, agree with me. Huh? Salary will come later. But how you perform contributing to the, your company and bring KPNG, number one in the world. Wow. And KPNG CEO will say, oh, wow, this is what I want. So bring the reputation to your company. So I think more important that your public reputation very important. You don't talk bad on your organization. When you go to the, any organization, proud to be that, and you grow together. Like Dr. Rao was a UMK, and I, I also from UMS last time. We had to get, I never talk bad on UMS. I collaborate with him. I brought him to the UMK and UTP. Dr. Enas, my, my university mate last time, we are, we are, we are, we are studying together. And we are not don't know each other, you know, Dr. Kero? We are just like, she's an English department. I was an economy, social sciences. But after 20 years, we met again. Oh, suddenly collaboration start again. You can see that that kind of collaboration is very important. So this is what I'm trying to say for today, uh, Dr. Cairo. Uh, some point I highlighted to do. Okay, Master. thank you. Okay, can thank I you. just add a little bit to the discussion? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, Dr. Dr. K, uh, yeah, please. yeah, I think uh, along those lines, uh, uh, the skills and attributes come to be very vibrant and they become the indicator of what a student's uh, future would be like. Um, according to some questions here, I'm just referring to some questions posed on the panel uh, in the in the web chat here. Um, for example, um, the skill sets that the students have been trained in uh, by Amira. Amira has uh, provided this question. The skill sets that the students have been trained in differ when they go out to the workplace. So. Um, he says, how can the graduate prepare for such situations? Well, it's very much, we don't have a magic ball answer to that, yeah. But um, I think that what actually can transpire in a communication moment that you have with the employer is to indicate your willingness, your willingness to explore, your willingness to try, your willingness to learn. That can be one way to show um, how you can adapt and adjust. So learning is, is always always ongoing. Then there's the other question where it says uh, something about um, how the situation will... Let me see. If you had to perform internship from home, how will this... Okay, the pandemic. How will the situation affect the building and enhancing of soft skills? Um, talking about internship opportunities that the students have right now it has been sort of limited in a way because they may not be able to go to the industries but they have to work from home use it as an opportunity use it as as a learning point use it as an impetus to offer yourself how you can make a difference for example even if he were to give you a scope list of one to three you know Get down to doing that, provide him your feedback, but after that also ask, how else can you offer your help? That is another way. So again, it's very much boiled to the person. The third one um, about, um, there was a point that I had in mind. Um, you, 
how 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 do you show your enthusiasm? Okay, how do you show your enthusiasm in terms of uh, remuneration? You may not be paid um, the 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 figure of salary that you want, but um, probably at this point of time, accept what you have, uh, accept it, and go on and learn. Think of the opportunity that. You have gained some learning experiences. You have gained some uh, forte, and from that, it can add on to your CV rather than having nothing. Yeah, it can add on to your CV. We had this. We, we had this problem before, uh, many a times with fresh graduates or trainees. Um, there would be the question where we want working experience, but hey, we've got no working experience. So I think the dynamism is is how when internship comes into the play yeah and part-time work all these are opportunities for you to build your skills upon so whatever it is be it setbacks or challenges i think we are all uh, sharing the same same uh, um, um, drive to the notion that we we empower ourselves at every opportune time yeah it may not match what you want exactly at this point of time, but take it on as an opportunity to grow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kai. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anna. That's a good uh, input from you, actually, about the uh, our graduate. Actually, we have a limited time to that. By the way, uh, uh, maybe I will jump to the uh, uh, Mr. Anil, okay, a bit, okay. Uh, uh, regarding to what uh, Dr. Anna said before, uh, it's also about like some, uh, you know, it's also like uh, some uh, experience. Maybe our students have uh, experience or they are lack of experience. So what, what uh, if they have a lack of experience, especially to facing the industry, of course, they go to the uh, industry, industry trainings before that, and then uh, they know a bit about uh, the, the ecosystem of the industries there. But by the way, uh, they still need more experience about that. So in perspective of the uh, uh, industrial, in the, in the perspective of the industries, actually, uh, how uh, to make our graduates uh, equip themselves by branding themselves and by marketing uh, themselves to make them uh, 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 more, uh, to make them employable, to make them, uh, you know, uh, employers uh, take them as their employees. So uh, maybe in perspective of the uh, industry, Dr. Anil can be, uh, Mr. Anil can be comments a bit about that. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Cairo. I, I think I want to highlight a, a few things here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, internships uh, does not only come in when, uh, I think students look at internship as a compulsory module to fulfill rather than looking for uh, to gain some real work experience. Uh, when they look out for an internship, that's where students start looking out. Okay, at the very last minute, then they start looking out for internships. Some of them, yeah, but most of them would have secured their internship months months ahead, right? And I think students should look at a perspective where you are looking, you want to gain the exposure, and then you can decide on which industries that you would like to intend uh, to intern in. But at the same time, I've also come across a, a group of students where, as long as there's a semester break what they do is they do a voluntary internship, right? So it doesn't have to be a compulsory internship in order for you to gain some experience. Uh, and, and that could also allow you to gain different experience. When I was a student, I used to leverage on this, right? I used to be, I used to do grab, yeah? I used to be a property negotiator while I was studying. And yet I could also deliver results and graduate as the best student in the business department. So I think it's not, it, it's, it's all depends on your interests and what you intend to do for your future career. If you don't intend to challenge yourself and to be out of your comfort zone, right, uh, it's, it's going to be a challenging road ahead, definitely, right? But at the same time, I also see, uh, like what I mentioned earlier, I shared that a lot of uh, firms are actually doing uh, webinars, right? Uh, in which it focuses on various perspectives. Just to answer to Dr. Bala's uh, uh, request earlier, uh, KPMG, what I've done is actually we have curated a program called the Career Bootcamp. 
as long as students are going out for internship, students are going out for their future graduates, where we actually uh, conduct a forum as the first session and series of webinars that focus on resume, that focus on the uh, on the uh, interview skills, mental well-being, stress management. Uh, we also look at professional etiquettes. It comes in a package. And after the whole uh, series of webinar and also the forum, students are then required to attend a mock interview session with our career advisors for them to identify what are the areas they need to further develop if they were to attend an interview. It's like a practice for them. So I think students should generally leverage on this kind of opportunities. And I, I know a lot of my, uh, my uh, some of my uh, um, some, some of my peers who's, who's also in other firms is actually doing all sorts of programs just to guide graduates out there to ensure that they have an avenue to look into apart from just their academic studies. I think essentially in order for them to stand out, I want students to always think that it is a competitive market. It doesn't matter. You must think not in terms of the job market, but also in your class, right? There is 40 students, but how are you going to stand out as compared to the other students? This is something that you should also ask yourself, right? If you want to be at the same level with all your friends, then it's going to be difficult, right, for you to attain your dream job. But if you see yourself as participating in various uh, in, in various webinars, in, in various part-time jobs, it doesn't matter. To me, is if you can be a barista and, and you can have that part of your resume, that will be good, right? But how do you explain it in your resume is also important. For instance, if you say that I have, I have been a barista for six months, that does not explain anything. But you say I've been a barista for six months, I've managed 100 to 200 customers. Right? within a short span of time, or perhaps I, I work under minimum supervision. This is how you articulate, so what Tansri mentioned earlier, how you articulate it, it paints a different picture, and it paints a different perspective to the industry. And when the industry hear those kinds of explanation, it, it really uh, paints a different picture, and it paints a positive picture for the student to actually attain their dream job. So I think generally, uh, what you should be well prepared is to participate in various part-time jobs, Right. Uh, take the opportunity to also participate in various webinars. Right. And in and, and KPMG, on our perspective, we are more than happy to guide students. Right. Doesn't matter weekday or weekend, we are happy to actually conduct the webinar. So I suggest you can also check out our KPMG UTP ambassadors page, Instagram. They have their TikTok page. They have their Facebook page. Right. Where they publicize all the events that they are actually conducting. And this is not just providing opportunities to a certain group of students, but they're also providing opportunities to students who are abroad, students who are in Malaysia, in the public universities, or even the, uh, the, uh, the private universities as well. So that does not limit your opportunity. There are a lot of opportunities out there. It's whether or not you want to challenge yourself and you want to take it, right? If you think in a sense that I'm only a student and I, will show, I should only be scoring grades, but I shouldn't be participating in that. That's the wrong mindset. I think having the right mindset is essentially very important in order for you to secure your dream job. Don't worry too much about salary, right? Uh, because as long as you have equipped yourself with the relevant skill sets, you're able to deliver accordingly, according to the expectation that is being set, I'm sure you will get what you want. Over to you, Dr. Caro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anil. That's very good input. Hopefully, our graduates can be take that as a guide for all of them to branding and uh, to marketing yourself, okay, at the futures, hopefully. And then, uh, still regarding to the branding and marketing, uh, uh, graduates uh, in yourself, uh, maybe shift to the uh, associate professor, Dr. Rao. Uh, this just uh, maybe you can be uh, give your own personal opinions about that, okay. Uh, because I'm just think that, uh, yeah, by using the social media, such as uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and a lot of things, that's not all of that I cover, actually, okay? Uh, so, I you think uh, that is the appropriate mediums can be used by the uh, students or by the graduates to branding and to marketing yourself? If yes, uh, maybe we have uh, academicians uh, in what role actually we need to guide them to do that okay please yeah thank you Rupati, uh, 
So uh, that's a good point to talk about, you know, which social media or how social media plays an important role in uh, students' future and also in getting the opportunities. Well, as uh, even before this, uh, Ms. Sunil was mentioning about LinkedIn and other various platforms, how they can, they can grab the opportunities. Because mostly, I, I use uh, most of the times LinkedIn and I, I update everything in the LinkedIn so that you will not only know the people in your field, but also from various other respective fields. And as a student, you, you have to explore the possibilities what are coming in social networks. Because nowadays, even the industrial uh, managers or industry people, they are also becoming very smart. So these social networks are free. So they are advertising there. So without spending not much money, even they are also utilizing, fully utilizing the uh, platforms which are available out there. So the students from, from their uh, college days or university days, they have to follow up all these kind of uh, social medias and also now most of the students are very good in uh, Insta, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, even Telegram, so to mention few of them. So they, they are really uh, very good in following all those kind of platforms. But before, you know, following all these, they should have, especially when they are trying for job, so most of the students, even nowadays, they are very much anxious about the things. So this is in the current scenario, which I, I can talk about this particular, you know, word, anxious, anxious and ambiguous. So there are so much of uh, ambiguity and they are so anxious about the jobs. And even uh, Prabhala as a senior professor, he has raised the, raised the curtains of uh, contradictory so many you know, to all our young lecturers. So he has, you know, uh, sent the challenge. Hey, you guys, you should address these topics. That's true, Prabhupada. We agree that. We agree on the, those kind of matters which you have raised. Uh, then self-motivation is most important for the students. With the anxiety, they are going with, for the, you know, with the depression kind of stuff. And also they are expecting high salaries. Even uh, Prabhupada clearly mentioned about uh, salaries. The students are not mainly focusing on the jobs. They are highly expecting the salaries. So instead of, I mean, this is a suggestion for the students, instead of uh, ex expecting the handsome salary, try to get some salary in the hand to get your experience. So that, uh, that would serve the purpose. And also, you can fully utilize all these social medias, platforms, whatever are available, and also looking into the websites of the, you know, industries or universities according to your interest. Because it is not uh, once you graduate, uh, you know, bachelor's degree in uh, sciences or social sciences, arts, in, you know, management, whatever it may be. Maybe later on your, your, you know, area of interest will be narrowed down because you will be studying lots of subjects in your bachelor degree or master's degree. But when it goes to your job, it must be focused on one area. So that you can just try to list down all the areas and then narrow down, then looking for the jobs in that particular field would certainly benefit you in succeeding the careers. And later on, once you get your job, then I have already you know uh, covered those points last time. Uh, mainly based on the team management, how you can solve the problems for the industry or the you know uh, organization. So that will certainly help you in succeeding in your career. As also you can become the leader. Not everyone can become the leader because there are certain skills you need to have. It's not uh, always about you know whether your 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 subordinates are doing the job in a right way or not. At the same time, the leader should you know, focus more on encouraging your subordinates. So I could see those kind of qualities and characteristics in some of the students where they are now succeeding in, in the leadership positions. Even they are, I mean, we are happy as a lecturers, only lecturers and academia field will have this kind of satisfaction that when the student grows,
we are not above you. So we feel so happy. So some of our students are CEOs, some of our students are, you know, they have achieved a lot when compared to us. But we still feel happy, you know, that the credit goes to all the academic uh, staff and all academicians present here. That's all from, from me, Dr. Okay. Thank you. Over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Associate uh, Professor Dr. Rao. Yeah. It's a great uh, uh, opinion and suggestion and maybe advice to the, our uh, graduates, okay, especially when they want to brand things and uh, when they want to market things, uh, they, are, they want to market their self. Okay. So uh, for the audience, maybe uh, if you want to uh, ask something or if you have uh, questions to ask, uh, just please use uh, chat box. Okay. Uh, which is already provided in the systems. So just uh, please do that and I will be uh, give the questions uh, to the, our respective uh, panels. Okay. So, Dr. Dr. Hyrule, uh, can I uh, join in a bit? Uh, if ah, you yeah, don't sure, mind? Sure, sure. sure please, uh, let's see. You don't mind? Eh? I'm, I'm very impressed by the panelists. Uh, this morning, uh, but I'm happy to note that uh, Professor Anil, uh, KPMG has done very well in terms of creating the environment for student uh, uh, attachment, for student uh, being uh, articulate and uh, inquisitive. Uh, I think the point uh, is well taken. Uh, my only comment is uh, not many people not many companies are like KPMG uh, because <laughs> as we know uh, as we know most of our industry or most of our enterprises are very small so the problem is actually catching the whole uh, student uh, before they graduate uh, to be uh, to be attached productively I think that's uh, that's a big question because some uh, undergraduate years uh, join in, as you said uh, correctly, Mr. Daniel, that, that is part of their program. But uh, being unprepared, they may lose out. They may lose out. I think that attachment should be taken seriously. And uh, the only thing is, for some companies, we know that it's a burden for them, you know. Uh, why should we employ, uh, you know, <laughs> undergraduate who are not uh, proficient, who have no experience? So, at the end of the day, we know some undergraduate complain that they make coffee, uh, cuci tandas, that kind of thing, lah, which is, of course, exaggeration. But uh, to be uh, to be fair to the big companies, I think some have done very well, uh, multinational and so on. But another additional, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Carol, uh, uh, if we see the government uh, higher education plan, there's always a statement, there's always a plan to say that uh, academic staff, faculty mem members must interchange with industry people uh, like Mr. Anil, with a lot of experience, be teaching in the faculty and uh, faculty members be attached say six months to understand you know the mechanics of uh, uh, operation of companies and so on but it's always planned you know we all in malaysia we like to plan but implementation is the weakest link so that's my comment uh, <laughs> me uh, dr kairol eh? yeah, so yeah. we can dwell on it with another seminar you know so our structure industry hasn't come to the level that Mr. Anil was talking about. But yeah. a company like KPMG, multinational, Petronas, they all do this kind of thing. But yeah. they can absorb all the undergraduate. So that's that my comment. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you okay. Okay. Very good comments, Tansley. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm interested with what kind of yeah, we, we always plan about a lot of things that we plan, but to, 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 to implement what I intend is another thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here maybe I have one question uh, here from uh, our audience. Okay. Uh, I thought the questions to the Mr. Anel. 
actually maybe maybe because Mr. Anil is the one from the industries here, yeah? so <laughs> okay, uh, you are going to focus to the industries, okay, uh, to the, our audience. Okay, uh, the question is, I'm just read here. Uh, due to current developments of uh, coronavirus pandemics, uh, what is your opinion, uh, Mr. Anel, on about changing the way how the industries adapt to new norms, industrial practical attachment with industry? So, how the KPMG approach uh, the challenge? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think this is a very good question. Uh, one thing that we are very thankful uh, before uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, actually came into the country, uh, we uh, uh, we are also very thankful that the firm has heavily invested in technology. So much so, when the, it hit the country, uh, we could transition well from working physically in the office to working from home. So at this point of time, uh, we are still actively hiring uh, for our three service lines, uh, which is audit, tax, and advisory. Uh, and, and hence why we have been also uh, strongly advertising positions as well. Uh, what we do is uh, onboardings are being conducted virtually. So today, uh, students don't have to be physically present in office where uh, laptops are being sent to their doorstep uh, in order for them to attend the onboarding on the first day. right? And then after that, uh, the, it all depends on the work that they do. Sometimes uh, uh, when our clients require us to come into the office, then there will be opportunities uh, for our interns uh, and uh, also graduates to travel to the client's place, but definitely with supervision. So in KPMG, uh, you don't work in silo, you work in a team. So for example, if you are serving a, a particular client, so it's called an engagement team, and within the engagement team, we always ensure that there is, uh, to the, there is people at different ranks, our colleagues at different ranks, so from seniors, uh, interns, uh, managers, and also uh, seniors as well. So this is where uh, they can then identify uh, and also understand better in terms of their learning curve and to refer to someone who is much senior to them. So at this point of time, uh, interns are still uh, working from home, especially with this FMCO. Uh, but we have, uh, I mean, today we are, we are very blessed to have platforms like Microsoft Teams where we can keep closely in touch with our employees and, and uh, we also uh, assign uh, supervisors in every team to actually uh, uh, take care of these interns to ensure that they have full understanding of the work that is being assigned to them and they also have catch-up calls with their seniors in the team. So uh, at this point of time, it's being well managed uh, and, and what we also encourage our interns to do because uh, there is a lot of e-learnings within the firm that they can actually leverage on. So apart from their internship, they can actually look into e-learnings, taking up as a learning opportunity during their internship. And, uh, and I think uh, we also have cu our current focus. Uh, we just launched a new program called the uh, Wellbeing 360, right? Uh, where uh, we also want our employees uh, at this point of time to ensure that they you know, enjoy uh, and understand what does it mean by stress management? What does it mean by well-being, right? So if they need any further assistance, we actually develop a program where um, they can actually refer to this buddy system. They can actually speak to someone in case if there is an issue that arises uh, and, and they can actually look into it uh, further. And then uh, like next week, we have a yoga Right, that is done virtually for our colleagues uh, in, in KPMG. We engage a yoga instructor. So uh, last week we had someone, uh, one doctor who actually talked about the vaccination today just to give our employees the exposure. But interns can also participate in that just to gain for some exposure. Apart from just work, they also need to enjoy their journey at KPMG. So that's how we are currently doing. Okay, thank you, Dr. Anil. Uh, 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 Mr. Anil, sorry about that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anil. Okay, that's a good input about that. Okay, uh, I jump to the another questions because we have a lot of questions here. So uh, maybe I just select uh, uh, some selected questions. It looks like same, so I'm just select. Uh, These are questions about the. I thought this for the all of the panelists. So open for the all of the panels. Uh, it has uh, been this from the anonymous. Uh, it has been said that uh, soft skill matter as much as technical skills. 
So, however, I noticed that most of the universities out there do not actually introduce soft skills, much as technical skills. What is your solution on this? Oh, I thought maybe it is from the, our academicians, uh, the representative of the universities here, uh, Dr. Rao, uh, uh, Dr. Enna, or Prof. Bana can get maybe answers to these uh, questions. Maybe Prof. Bana can be comments a bit about this. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. K, thank you for the question. I think later, I think Dr. Rao can add to the webinar. I think, I believe that uh, teaching soft skill at the university is not, is not uh, appropriate. You know, teaching is different to embedded. I think, I think, okay, do you remember last time, Vasa Melayu Melantas curriculum, you know that, the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure, okay, sure. English, huh? <laughs> Malay language uh, go across the, all the discipline. That's what we're taught. So today, the same approach I would like to propose here, you know, for the all the Malaysian university. That means the soft skill is not is not teach by someone, but it's embedded in the teaching. Okay, how to embed it? Example, I give you all right. I mean, when lecturers, when teach in the class, who take part in the class? Is your lecturer and student? So let students speak. Like today, you see, we, all of us can speak, you know. I mean, the student can speak. Let them uh, frame frame out the, the, the issue because, like what Musani said, actually all the online, they can pick up Musani. We cannot teach, teach them. If <laughs> I say, I will say something, they say, Prof, you're talking 20 years ago, theory, Prof. It's not relevant anymore. They can say like that. Why not you ask them? Hey, today, you know what is uh, the latest industrial relation theory? Uh, what do you think? Oh yes, Prof. I already went to the uh, like that, like that. You know, so they come in, and that is a soft skill. That they, they mean they are brave to speak up because mostly of students, I found that I'm funny. Every 25 years I'm teaching, I think three more experienced than than me. They don't talk. You know why? They was like punished by our parents last time. Remember that three? Or you speak <laughs> only. I you need to one day check up. Daddy, they brought to the to the university. They scared to see you. <laughs> So why not the first round of teaching, uh, Dr. Carol, uh, we make them uh, free themselves. Oh, hey, hey, no, come, come, hey, you're okay. You, you just like like what I do only in my class, huh? I say, let's uh, take a uh, selfie first when I'm in the class, lah, not like now. Lah. Oh, they see, why, why pro selfie? Hey, of course, lah, today I want to see your face, lah, your smiling face. And, uh, and then they start, you know, engage with you. They won't sleep, you know. So, you know, you know, you, you can attract, you know, like examples, and eh, when I teach my class, so many things are going on, you know, I brought the industry people, I brought these lecturers, I brought, so other students were looking at you, you know, hey, bro, can I join your class or not? And I'm not talking, I'm not boast myself, what I'm telling you, they were already attractive, you know, so they want to come in. So I think soft skill must be embedded with teaching and learning. And especially now the online, super, you know, like like what Mizani said just now, and Tansri will say that, this must be embedded during the teaching online. You know, Miss Ani, how I did? I also don't know. I'm very weak in the online teaching. I'm, you know, like, I'm like, 50 years old and Tansri, we're all uh, backward. Eh? But suddenly, Tansri, I learned Tansri, I put a two computer. So what yeah. I did, last time student was sleeping, you know, because you turn on your PowerPoint presentation, you won't see another computer. I said, no, can you turn on your, your, your video? Ah, I can see all the faces. So they don't sleep, you know, they're engaging with you. At the same time, I do the virtual party, you know, next week, tomorrow, I got a virtual party with them, you know, they're going to bring the cake, you know, and then what they did, uh, one day, you know, they sent something to me, Prof, can you go to the campus or not, in this time, I said, when there, suddenly they say, uh, someone come in here, say thank you to bring the flowers, everything, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this, but they want, they want to, they want to say thank you to you, and then they do the virtual party, we are singing a song, tomorrow we go to the virtual party, Dr. Carol, uh, the you can join us tomorrow. <laughs> this is a real virtual party that I think take everything going on. So I say my last class is actually enjoy the class. So that's what they they, they, they remember you, you know. Wow, that can so this is a human resource skill that I say when you become human resource manager, this is what you have to do. So I think my question to answer to the Dr. K mm. must embed it. Don't go embed and teach. I, I believe some lecturer not happy with me, yeah. but I don't care. Like uh, Dr. Rao, medicine student. Yeah. They don't know how to smile because you don't teach them, they don't bring them in the in the reality to the kampong, bring mm. the doctors to the kampong, you know, sit with them, talking to them. How can doctor to be doctor and sit on the yeah. left? No, that's why they're on the left. You have to come yeah. out and talk with us, Dr. Rao. We are people to, to help your medical students. Thank you. Yeah, uh, one thing, so, one thing, yeah. Dr. Rao, one thing, yeah, please, 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 please,
Uh, because I was uh, my first degree in UK uh, university tak ada orientasi no ranking nothing you just go in you find out where the library is where is your lecture hall tapi where itu yang out. teringat bro huh? itu mana? yang teringat that ranking <laughs> tu <laughs> memory <laughs> memory itu yang best <laughs> we all I think some of us go through this process <laughs> but I pun dulu hostel dulu Uh, from one I must watch tell they rag and all like, you, you then you don't want to talk you know and yeah. similarly I would suggest IPTA all minggu orientasi buang lah wasting of time and money because the senior the senior uh, student will rag you and then they are direct to the library they are like where the canteen is Ma- masa tu dia cari jodoh prof oh <laughs> <laughs> the senior one eh? but I think I mean seriously they have to review the terror tak payah leave, leave the student on their own they can find out yeah yeah maybe we, we can looking back to the objective of the uh, orientation week isn't it uh, ah betul because they, uh. they actually the idea is to get the student acquainted <laughs> yeah we, can, we make them independent we uh. make independent semua kena ikat hidung jalan sini sini. Actually, actually, in UK and Australia, they did same thing to me. Everything they throw you out, you know, they go themselves. I don't orientation. Oh yeah yeah, they, you just register, you find out yourself. Maybe what we should do is a forum for freshman year lah, you know, uh, ah, invite the industry, the, uh, the first year lecturers, you know, have a, a very interactive forum session on what is expected from the students. Because as most times when students go into the campus, uh, even in their first year, they they feel overwhelmed. One mm-hmm. is in their education, second is in the areas of their co-curriculum, because this is where uh, the student societies want to recruit new members, They do not understand what is the perspective. So I think it, you should have a forum session and dialogue session, more like a tetarik session rather than a, uh-huh. a very formal orientation. What <laughs> was that? I, I agree. I agree. So I think that also uh, in the circumstance or in the new ecosystem, actually, uh, at our new world, I think because uh, yeah. uh, you know the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, and also we have a four industrial revolutions era, all of that thing. So uh, not just our graduate or our students only must be changed, but also everybody must be changed. Yes, yes, uh, yes. With a new to all. <laughs> yeah. it, it is definitely an uphill yeah. battle for the current generation. Uh, um, yeah. You know, there are no opportunities to meet and interact, but then um, this is a very simple example huh? like uh, my daughter had her friend's birthday yesterday and they made it a point to to have a meeting virtually and they got connected uh, from all over the world and they actually had a party and singing a birthday song those kind of things i mean i mean just simple gestures and and i like the idea of like virtual party taking it like And if if I could add on just a, 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 I think there was one question on EQ and mental health. I think that is a superb question and and it is so important at this point of time. Whatever it is, um, keep the people at heart. Understand that everybody's facing challenges. There was a point in time when uh, I had a student who was absent for his class. Uh, and he's never absent, he's usually present. So I inquired, And I, I, I said, is there anything wrong? He said, Madam, I just need a break. I don't want to see anything online. I just want to be totally free. <laughs> oh my God. And you know, how do you, how do you, how do you adjust to such answers? How do you accept such answers? We have to learn, even we as educators, we have to learn. I said, okay, son, it's great. Thank you for sharing and telling. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, so we have to accept, you know, sometimes they have problems. Yeah. So um, I think being human at the very bottom line is so important. Be it whichever perspective we are coming from. La. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that, what, what, that, that's right. Uh, the techna, especially uh, yeah, the health, mental, mental health and issues, especially in the pandemic COVID-19s. We worked uh, at uh, our home 
okay mm. respectively so uh, maybe uh, it's uh, really affects yeah, in our way of work, working from home okay yes, or yes. learning from home yes, so yes. Uh, maybe uh, uh, what uh, prof Rao, okay can be give a bit comments about that uh, okay uh, <laughs> since uh, that allow maybe have the expertise about these uh, uh, issues okay will there be any mental awareness uh, program actually uh, included in the NIMS, uh, syllabus at the university etc yeah thank you so much happy dr k uh, well uh, when when we talk about uh, medical curriculum so they uh, you know it is already embedded the mental health issues and mental health curriculum is uh, already embedded in the system so this is one core curriculum where all the students have to be. And uh, uh, another important issue raised by Prof. Bala also, uh, I would like to address here. Probably I may not uh, agree much based on my personal interactions with them. Medical students are, uh, I mean, they are quite okay, friendly as well, when compared to other students. Uh, but it all depends on the personality prof, individual. Uh, uh, but most of the time, especially in the medical uh, faculty, we train them even as uh, Dansri just mentioned, uh, orientation week. So during orientation week, we tell them where in other faculties, we don't tell them. In uh, medical faculty, we train them how exactly they have to be. Because most of the times they will be dealing with lots of patients, uh, patients with different diseases. So it's not that everybody will have the similar diseases. Some of them will be so much down. Uh, you know, now I'm narrowing down to the mental health issues, especially mental, there are so many mental health issues, you know, diseases. So they, they need to have lots of attention and we need to train them or treat them empathically with so much of empathy. And also uh, give them mental boosting most of the times give them motivation, give them, uh, you know, talk to them uh, very closely, treat the patient as your family member, so all those stuff. So usually, and, and especially in UMS, we have another specific program, like in UMK, we have CF, Student uh, Industrial Entrepreneurship Program. In, 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 in UMS, for medical students, we have Adaptive Family, where a group of students should adapt one family. They don't know any anything about the family, and these students, group of students, high six students, they should adapt one family from very remote areas. And these students should go and visit them every month, once in a month, or once in two months, or once in two weeks, and they have to provide them. I know they have to ask them how are you, all those kind of things, because they are with very less uh, facilities. And sometimes if the students are okay, they can also bring a few things to them, which means they're also training, uh, you know, how to deal with uh, the people who are with very less facilities and who are with uh, minimum medical facilities as well, with communicable and non-communicable diseases. So this is what uh, usually they do. And again, coming back to the question, uh, the mental health, Yes, we had a very series of uh, programs related to mental health during COVID pandemic because mental health has been affected a lot during COVID. It's not, not for the diseased people, it's for everyone. Every one of us have, have been affected by COVID pandemic mentally. Maybe we, can, we cannot measure how maximum or how minimum we have affected, but every one of us have been affected uh, in one or other ways. Sometimes we will be, you know, sitting very, very sedentary. You know, sedentary lifestyle will be more during pandemic if you are working from home. When you are working from office, certainly we will go to the department, we will go here, we will go there. But when you are working from home, so the sedentary lifestyle will be more. And sedentary lifestyle will not be uh, very good for health. That is number one. And another thing is loneliness. Loneliness, say for example here, you know on the screen I can see six uh, panel members. So all six panel members will have different mental abilities to handle 
loneliness. So everybody cannot handle the loneliness in a same same manner or similar manner. Some people may go depression very easily. Some people will, you know, withstand with all the hurdles, whatever they are getting in uh, loneliness when they are alone, you know, doing their job. But some people, they may focus very, very much. You know, they may focus more when they are alone. So these few points also uh, affecting the, you know, uh, mental health when, when they are doing the work from home. And another thing, distraction. So when we are working from office, when we are working from home, sometimes you may get distractions, you know, from the family members, from children, you know, from other factors, or sometimes even self, self-distraction. We may think of so many other things. So uh, these kind of issues are being, uh, you know, raised by various medical health professionals. Even recently also we had a forum on this, so mental health and psychiatric problems during COVID-19, uh, you know, with affected, without affected by COVID-19 disease. And another most important thing, uh, especially, uh, you know, the, the one of the points you have made in the question was curriculum. In the curriculum, yes, definitely we talk about, you know, to the medical students, we talk about uh, mental health issues and also most of the times we talk to them about mindfulness as again this mindfulness will you know reflect all the issues in technical skills and also soft skills because when we deal with the things any one of us you know every one of us we usually don't use 100% of mind very less people they they will be very mindful when they are you know dealing with the things. So mindfulness is also one of the main aspects where they deal in mental health stabilities and all this stuff. So obviously we are dealing with all those things and I think all the medical uh, schools in Malaysia and across the globe, they have this in the curriculum. I think even CUCMS also have this in, uh, in their curriculum for mindfulness, mental health uh, issues and also mental health awareness programs are existing in the clinics. Thank you, uh, AP Dr. Cairo. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you very much, Assistant uh, Professor Dr. Rao, <coughs> regarding to your inputs. Okay. Uh, and I thought that uh, this is the last question okay, from our audience, actually. Okay, uh, it's uh, special to uh, Mr. Anil. <laughs> yeah, very famous. I thought Mr. Anil in this uh, forums, everybody looking to you because you one of the uh, the only one representative of the industry. So a lot of things maybe they they, they need to know. Okay, uh, the, the last question is about uh, uh, the protege candidates. Okay, uh, what is uh, uh, your opinion, actually, Mr. Anil, about the protege candidates pass uh, after the after the protege programs after they uh, after they uh, going through your programs okay so what is the past okay i i do uh, i i do support this initiative uh, reason being is because uh, one of my own colleagues uh, which we just recruited into the team is also an ex uh, protege uh, from another firm and, and and i strongly believe that by having such a program it allows uh, the the a employee to actually gain perspective in various uh, functions within the uh, within the company, and that is where you then be considered an all-rounder, right? So, for example, if you were to go into HR, you have branding, you have recruitment, you have uh, talent management, uh, you also have uh, uh, the the administrative side of HR, right? So then it allows you to gain different skill sets. So. Uh, to be honest, uh, if students can uh, uh, take part of this opportunity, right, uh, to participate in a protege program, uh, it would be very good, right? Uh, sometimes when uh, companies have such a program, uh, it's also a platform for them to be uh, to consider you to be converted into a permanent role. So there is an opportunity for you to look into as well, provided you have been performing well during your protege program. So I think it's an excellent initiative. Uh, and it all depends on your path 
that you intend to go into. I know one of my uh, colleagues who actually was in the HR co-teach uh, area where he actually gained different perspective. Uh, and, 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 and after that, he wanted to pursue a career related to those departments that actually gained some experience. So I think uh, when you apply for a co-teach program, it has, it has to be relevant to what you intend to do for your career. So that at least you can take those experiences and also uh, and, and that could be an added value to your future career as well. So uh, before you apply for a program, a protege program, identify uh, departments that you are looking to explore, then only you apply for a selected program rather than just uh, applying uh, for sort of uh, different programs. So also another thing is firms are also uh, uh, establishing graduate programs uh, that allows you to go on a transition. So for instance, uh, uh, we, we also have a graduate program that allows students to go on a rotation every six months that allows you to challenge yourself every six months to try out one department as well. So that could also be an avenue for students to look into when you're looking for a graduate career, uh, apart from just applying to the departments that you intend to go into. Okay, okay great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anna. That's a great information uh, from you. Okay. So everybody, hopefully, get that uh, message okay so uh, now we are uh, achieved in, 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 at the end of this uh, session actually we were the tough actually especially as a moderator <laughs> by the way there's an experience and then uh, of course uh, we've uh, got a lot of uh, information and lots of uh, you know uh, knowledge that we get from our panelists. Okay, uh, we we, uh, we we talk or discuss about uh, the importance of hard skills, the importance of the uh, yeah the soft skills, and then uh, the students' readiness of uh, on skills. What are the industrial perceptions on skills? So uh, lots of things involvement in macro certifications. We also cover the experience uh, versus no experience candidates, and then how to branding and marketing yourself, and also about the EQ and uh, uh, it's uh, it related with our students, and then uh, in what what else? Uh, particip participation in extra curriculum, curriculum activities and a lot of things. So hopefully all of uh, the things uh, the, uh, that the matters that we uh, uh, discuss okay, uh, will be give some uh, guides to, to to our graduates uh, who are listen us at the outside, who are watching us at the outside and around the world, especially because we. Uh, uh, broadcast okay uh, by using the YouTube uh, and also um, MS and Microsoft Teams and a lot of things. So uh, finally, uh, my word is uh, thank you very much to all of the uh, our panelists. Also, uh, especially also to the Yang Berbahagia Professor Emeritus Tan Sri Dr Anwar. Okay, join us okay, from the beginning until now okay, to give your uh, strong support to us. Okay, hopefully, all of us will be changed. Uh, the scenario that uh, you know uh, issues uh, covered in all of the uh, graduates now. So my last word is thank you very much and enjoy yourself. Okay. Hi, right, that's it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Moderator. And also thank, thank you, Dan Street. And thank you all. Thank you. Hello. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you to all the participants yes. as well. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you so much to Dr. Cairo, to all the panelists, and to Tan Street for the engaging session. And to be honest, I personally, as a student who will soon be going for my internship, I have gained a lot of input, uh, advice, and also tips from all of you throughout the discussion, be it from the academics and also the industrial perspective. And I believe that uh, we have covered all of the objectives from the forum just now. Thank you, everyone, for that. Thank you. And now it is time for our lucky draw session but it is only eligible to those who have registered for this event. And uh, to all participants, 
once I have mentioned your name, please kindly verify your present in the chat box to redeem your reward. Or else, I'm sorry, but we uh, might need to move to another winner. All right, let's direct our attention to the first lucky person today. Alright, drum rolls everyone. Yes. Congratulations to Miss Nurul Ain Adipah Binti Romzi. Miss Nurul Ain, can you kindly type in I'm here or yes um, in the chat box so that um, our, co our committee will um, our committee will approach you right after this event for your reward. Um, I'll give you some time uh, to reply me in the chat box. And meanwhile, I will start the countdown now. So, Miss Nurul Ain Adibah Binti Romzi 1. Miss Nurul Ain Adibah Binti Romzi twice. Miss Nurul Ain Adiba Binti Romzi tries. So, um, yeah, I don't see uh, Miss Nurul Ain's replies in the chat box. So, I believe that um, we have to move and choose our next lucky winner. But hold on, Iman. I'm afraid um, she might need some time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the prize um, is going to be a secret between us and the lucky winner. <laughs> Alright. Is Nora Ain here? Is it? Um, no, I think. We can proceed to the okay. second one. Yes, sure, Iman. Maybe we should remove it first. Okay, guys. Okay, drum rolls. One, two, three. Wow. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Are you here? Mama Mr. Hakimi. Muhammad Hakimi, Muhammad Saf Shaf. Yeah, eh? Please yeah. kindly type I'm here or yes in the chat box. Maybe Iman, you can start the countdown now. Okay, so calling for ones, calling for twice, and calling for thrice. So, Mr. Muhammad Hakimi, are you there? Not here, I think. Uh, Esther, I cannot see the chat box. So, uh, you can see the chat box, Esther. Yes, uh, I think Muhammad Hakimi is not here with us, mm -hmm. but we'll see him in the afternoon session, I think. Okay. But hold on, Iman. I think um they need more time. Okay. Hopefully. Sure, sure. Take your time, Mr. Muhammad Hakimi. Okay, man. Can you proceed with another? Okay, um, sure. sure. <laughs> I think I'm gonna customize it since it's, it's like kind of kind of boring the uh, songs. So we after spin we put. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay, which one? Eh? Uh, 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 wait for. Try this one. Okay. One two. <laughs> Kind of dramatic. So, uh, Miss Norjaida Jalila, are you there? Miss Norjaida? Uh, 
Okay, I think I'm gonna make a countdown. Okay, so Miss Nojida wants. Miss Nojida twice. And Miss Nojida uh, twice. You can see the comments, eh, Esther? Yes, but I'm still waiting because um, the people in the live, we need to consider them. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Do we really include background music? Oh, um, we have... No. We I have... think someone said I'm here just now. Yeah. <laughs> Is it for Jaida or the yes. Jaida? It's the Miss Nor Jaida. Okay. okay, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to Miss uh, Nor Jaida Jalila Binti Nozi. Um, I guess Iman, should we bring um the three of the lucky winners to the evening session? What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Sure, sir. Yeah, sure. Thank you, and and I please think... be, please stay dramatic, okay? Okay, sure, sure. Thank you so much, Iman. Okay. So, can, congratulations to Miss Norjaida Jalila, and we will bring uh, the three lucky winners next to the evening session. Congratulations again, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Iman. Thank you, Esther. That marks the end of our lucky draw session, and do not feel discouraged because we still have a lucky draw in the evening session. So, please come and join us. Uh, because who knows, you might be the lucky one later. So bear with us until the end of PC Band. And for now, let us hear some recap from the morning session by our first speaker, Professor Dr. Balakrishnan. Okay, thank you, uh, Esther, for the be a very excellent uh, MC here. Yeah? Everybody was uh, alert and lightning. Okay, um, I think. Uh, we are since the nine o'clock eh? until now. I think nobody become tired. Eh? Everybody very energetic and very exciting. And everybody want to know what's happening in the afternoon. So as my role to recap the the whole session, uh, maybe uh, Doctor Anna will add in later. I think from the speech uh, by the, uh, the when opening. Eh? Uh, I think some of the speakers already highlighted the issue on uh, 4.0 IR and I think the uh, what the soft skill eh, versus technical skill that is I think our our aim for, for today and also we look at our team eh, that we are clearly looking at uh, what are the capacity and income uh, generation for the next future our graduate I think I think all of us here, uh, the speakers, I think, already highlighted a lot of the issue uh, this morning. And everybody concerned about our graduate, our future graduate. Nobody think by themselves, but they think about our own uh, children uh, that are going to be uh, future leaders in our country. I think what happens today, uh, this morning, uh, Tansri was highlighted uh, two main issues, uh, three main issues actually, You're talking about national policy. And uh, mainly, you, you focus on the uh, vision uh, prosperity in 2030, uh, which I think before that, vision 2020, and you also link to the high income nation. Uh, I think that is a national uh, policy that in, in uh, linking to the MOHM, Ministry of Higher Education. And of course, uh, Ministry of Higher Education will link direct to the, all the private and public universities in Malaysia. So the end product is actually graduates. So what we do now, actually, we have to link each other. That's what Atansri was I was talking about that. But mainly, finally, you will end up with the three main things. I think I believe this is very important for our participant here, who are our future leaders. I think we're talking about Rukun Negara. I think Rukun Negara is one of the basic fundamental principles for all of us to follow. Uh, maybe Dr. Rao and uh, foreign uh, uh, academics or foreign uh, employees to work here I think we have the, this Rukun Negara and this Rukun principle I think followed by all our our, our citizens of the Malaysia. And in line with that, you were talking about national identity and also ethics. I think most fundamental soft skill that we need in calculate to the uh, graduate is ethics actually. So ethics is a fundamental and ethics how 
you inculcate actually I think starting from the family first and then you, you drive through all the way down to until you get a job and so on. I think most important ethics is very important. We can see that some of the uh, CEOs, some of the big, big players in the, in the country now, right? Uh, they are involving in this certain, certain issue like corruption and so on. I think I believe I believe uh, we need to inculcate among the delivery. One study conducted in UKM, huh? uh, it was showed that empirically conducted, it showed that I think 30, 40 percent uh, graduate they want to take a bribes in the future. So what do you mean that? I think that's a very important uh, issue that we need to uh, consider that uh, we need to inculcate the ethics from the beginning and also when they come to the university, we need to teach them all these issues, right? And uh, followed by uh, our forum team today is uh, technical skill versus a soft skill. And I think our our one, the only uh, industry play, uh, player in, in this room, actually Mr. Anil, uh, Mr. Anil start up with a very good uh, um, introduction that he said KP, uh, KM, MG was done a very great job that uh, you come up with ambassador of uh, KPMG in the universities. And then I believe that you are patient to the university to help them, to support them. Of course, you want to bring them to the next level. So meaning uh, basically what, what is going to happen is actually what you're trying to say that the engagement must start from the university and then you inculcate, inculcate in the industry later on. And he was talking about the fundamental issue, the skill, suppose the graduates should have. The example, like he said, uh, you know, soft skill in terms of the how to be internalized, how to be networking, how to be socialized, you know, through the online and so on. Eh? So these are the issues that he highlighted, followed by uh, uh, Dr. Anna was talking about competent communication skills and how to link to the graduate uh, themselves. Eh? where they are should started at a university, they should have prepared themselves. They should know about themselves, you know, they should know understand themselves before understand anything. So they should know, understand the role as a student. They are not a school student, but they are university student. I keep on telling most of the university students, you can do anything you can do. You can do a lot of things, but with the principle, with the uh, current uh, regulation, university. For example, they can organize the global leaders. They can bring a Bill Gates. They can bring uh, all the you know top leaders in the country. They are all the big big uh, players, like including in China and others. Huh? Bring them to the university and give them opportunity to talk to them and ask them to deliver what they want. So that's another issue highlighted by uh, Dr. Anna also talking about industry attachment, and she was talking about industry attachment. How to uh, is it industry attachment is the key for to get a job? And actually, there's a pro, there's a contra. I think I believe industry attachment starting point. When you go there, you're not just doing a coffee or whatever, you have to do the real job. I believe uh, universities should play on this industry attachment. They should prepare our students before they go to that industry or intensive. They should uh, actually prepare in earlier. This is what we do in UMK and also in my previous university, UMF. What we do now before the student go to the industry, we need to understand what industry they go and how to adapt to that industry. That's what I highlighted by Mr. Anil. You must understand where they want to go the next in the industry and what what the job available uh, how to adapt the job to the to, to them like uh, one, or a few students uh, they will specialize in uh, hr or maybe something but they end up with the marketing they end up with the uh, entrepreneur they are a lot of my previous students they end up with something someone because they already got the basic technical knowledge in the university but when you go out they try to adopt with all the skill they have and they've been someone so today they are someone ceo they are already been a uh, super uh, excellent in the in the company, yeah. So that's what, and then and followed by uh, Dr. Rao. Dr. Rao was talking about uh, uh, fundamental issues, soft skill, huh? that uh, the students should have. He was he was telling that uh, he already practiced some of the issues in the campus, in the on the class, and he was saying that how how the student go go beyond the university. For example, he say he talking about example, uh, student can organize such certain uh, you know forum between one university to another university or between one country to another country and this one can be done student actually student must play an important role rather than lecturers to play right lecturer only be a mentor lecturer only be moderator for them but all the activities is actually initiated by them and this i think i think this credit goes to kpmg where you already giving a room for utp students or maybe other student in the, in malaysia that they are the one actually uh, initiate you're talking about their their engagement with the social media and yeah. I think so on. I'm, I'm not saying student to engage more time with social media. It's fine. You can go to Facebook, you go to Instagram. That's what your, your free time. But 
you also engage with the professionals, uh, which I, I'm always uh, focused on the LinkedIn, where you can talk to many people. There are people, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people around all the globe will be there. You can engage with them. I engage to many people in the world. I engage with all the professors. Sometimes, uh, through their LinkedIn, I brought professors from other country to come and give. So even though we don't know each other, but we, we become friends. So the friend, friendliness is must be important uh, element that you must have. And always be ready in, in whatever circumstances, whatever pandemic, you're ready to adapt yourself. Uh, and also, uh, you know, you know when, when, when example, you go to the companies, uh, you need to. So these are the thing, issue I think we highlighted today. And also, also highlighted our matching grant. Eh? which I think we're talking about uh, uh, the, you know, the readiness of the uh, employability and what are the skills needed by the employers. I think the, the, the result, early results show that there were a lot of things to be done within the graduate. So graduate need to prepare themselves. At the same time, industry also need to understand the graduate limitation. Probably there will be big, uh, I mean, I mean we, are, we already have engagement, but we need to have a big policy. So I think uh, when the moderator, I'd like to thanks to Dr. Cairo, who are moderating uh, the issue. He started with a very good point. He highlighted some fundamental questions and he keep on going and uh, he addressed issue on that. So thank you, Dr. Cairo, for the all the input that you're putting there. And also thanks for the participant outside who are asking many questions uh, toward the panelists. And I really thanks to Yang Bahagia, uh, Tansri Professor, Emeritus Tansri Professor Anu Ali, yeah, who is actually willing to stay with us Although uh, at this point he quite uh, busy, he need to rest. But Hansi was engaging, and I think he really, really loved. And he was telling me uh, a minute ago that he like to talk to the student. And I said, why not uh, we do more engagement online? I think maybe KPMG also can engage with us. Then we can do more things. So we can bring a lot of students to participate. I believe empower the student. Don't empower to ours, but empower the student. Let student run the thing. Let student. Uh, do all things you know they can bring the social media they can bring the uh, you know all these speakers so that let them do we only support them in terms of financial in terms of whatever but if the student can do all this i think the graduate employability which is no problem we don't talk about graduate employability anymore we're only talking about how to become the excellent staff in the future that's all not employability issue actually to improve them to be the next leader so employability issue will go up if we can work together and I really, uh, we really need the industry partners come and help us. We all work together in the end. That's what the conclusion made by all the panelists is one uh, nation, one Malaysian, not only one Malaysian, we're a global player. You can be a one global nation. We can have broad working with the many countries in the world and they can help each other. So this is what we can say uh, in this uh, conclusion. I would like to say, advise all the graduates, you are talented, you are the best, you can do everything regardless where you come from. Either you come from the poor family or middle class or top class, you all in the one nation. And I think our government also willing to support, and they have a lot of uh, uh, plan like HRDF. HRDF are bringing a lot of free courses uh, to you all. It's a free online courses, and uh, maybe you can go in and learn. And then they also got a lot of program, uh, place and train and so on. So I think everybody want to support our graduate. So you are the officially you are the person to develop our nation. Thank you very much. I hand over to MC. Uh, Esther. Wow, thank you so much, Doc, uh, Prof. Dr. Bala, because I feel uh, very motivated um, listening to your summarize of this event. Thank you. And um, before that, I would like to invite all the speakers and panelists to reply the unanswered question in the chat box. But last but not least, let us invite Dr. Anna to recap the morning session. Um, hi, Esther. Thank you so much for holding the fort this morning and uh, keeping all of us sane together. Thank you, dear. You have been such an inspiration. Uh, I'm trying to uh, thank you also, Prof. Bala, for recapping all the important points uh, that have been shared and reiterating our emphasis of the objective of our talk this morning. Um, there is a question by a uh, different uh, scholarly group of uh, postgraduate students. Uh, please forgive us if we if you felt that we, we had not addressed you, but I think in general, uh, whatever uh, um, um, skills or competencies that we have highlighted, attributes that we have highlighted, uh, also include uh, the, the, the postgraduate community. So I think uh, one of the questions from Mohammed Idris, if I may just add on a little bit, was um, he was referring to the job 
prospect, I think, because I'm a PhD scholar in finance and also a lecturer uh, from finance for the last seven years. So I think his concern is how do we grow, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, Mohammed and all the other PhD scholars around here who are listening in, you have many, many fantastic opportunities to grow. You are working with an institution. You can leverage your institution as you have the advantage of working with a, a university or an institution. That will be your number one leverage. Then you can leverage as a PhD scholar. You can take, take advantage of many talks, many conferences as usual, conferences uh, that you can uh, participate in and in this way, through this way, meet and network with more people. Just as has, uh, all of us have shared here, you continue to use your platform as a point of broadening your whole circle. Um, during my, my experience as a scholar, PhD scholar, um, <coughs> I had collaborated with um, many of the prophetic writers in the area and we had come up with uh, a book uh, yes so book publications with other scholars in your area would be one way to also grow and enhance and then you know this can add on to your mileage getting onto all the social media platforms are also another way to mileage whatever you have done your contributions or differences that you have created not only through small ways or big ways in publication but even uh, personal contributions in your clubs and societies making talks getting your works published those are all many numerous ways to grow so keep on growing take on training take on certifications that are abundance as mentioned by mr anil uh, and all the others here so um i think um what we have mentioned this morning addresses the whole population huh? Uh, uh, be it undergraduate be it tvet learners be it um postgraduate students uh, we are all the same and even professionals our learning doesn't stop it continues every other day this 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 uh, idea of a talk is also a first time experience for all for all of us here so um, it was it is it is also a learning journey yeah? uh, and uh, so so in that way we are learning every day and we hope through this we can spread our visibility as they say you have to increase your visibility i think i think all these platforms have one aim in mind is to encourage and spur your visibility so even as a scholar even as a phd student even as an undergraduate student visibility becomes very important that's how you make the difference in yourself yeah thank you very much uh, back to you miss esther thank you Thank you so much, Dr. Anna, for the brief and eye-opening recap. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all for the morning session. But we will be back for the morning afternoon session at 2 p.m. with some interesting topics to be discussed. So stay tuned with us until the end of this event. And lastly, kindly scan the QR code and fill in the feedback form to redeem your e-certificate. Until then, See you guys at 2 p.m. and enjoy your lunch. Stay safe and take care. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs> See you guys at 2 p.m. Thanks, Esther. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Thanks, Esther. We'll see you later. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Okay. Eh? See you tomorrow.